Hey, what's up, Scott Ball? Give me with Imagination Creation Films. And today, well, it's Friday. Uh, I can't push the intro button because I'm not on that software anymore. So, uh, yeah, but da, 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 there's your intro. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Friday. I'm doing a uh, live stream here, and I'm using new software, which new software means I get to have guests on. And today we have a very special guest, one that I've been trying to get on here, one I've been teasing for a while. Um, and uh, no, dog, don't bark. I didn't tease you. No. Uh, and uh, no. This is not your time. You could have barked earlier. Uh, but I've got him on here, and it is David Weldon from L.A., and he's uh, kind of an amazing, uh, kind of a cre creative DP. I'll, I'll let him introduce himself to everybody. Go for it. <laughs> uh, thanks, Scott. Um, I'm, a, I'm a cinematographer from L.A. I'm originally from uh, Washington, D.C. Went to college in Pittsburgh, and I've lived in California now for the last... I don't know, six, six, seven years now, I think. Um, started out like a lot of people, you know, in different areas. I was a PA for a little bit, was a grip and an electrician and spent some time in the camera department as an operator. And the last two years, I've been able to transition full time into just being a, a DP. And now I'm, I'm social distancing like everybody else. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. And we appreciate that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By doing the smart way of social distancing, and that is all via the interwebs. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I, li I like that your dog tried to steal your thunder a little bit. That he really did, exciting. and he doesn't do that. <laughs> he just decided today. Now he's looking at me. He's like, what? He's what? like, where's my bow? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. let a little bit of people build up into here so we can have a nice little audience because uh, you people get your questions ready because David <laughs> – he sent me a lot of BTS shots uh, and also some some nice stills from stuff he shot, and it's it's pretty amazing. And he's going to talk about them in depth, um, so it's going to be awesome. So get your questions, get them get them ready, because I'll be able to pop them right up on here on the the screen. Like, uh, hey Scott, oh. hey Reach Films, uh, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's kind of small. I liked it. Let me change that better. <laughs> I was changing everything. Let's do the default. <laughs> there we go. It's bigger. There. We go. Oh, nice. This is a pretty powerful software for what you can it do with a live stream. It is. I went ahead and, and upgraded. Uh, I paid twenty dollars. I haven't told my wife yet. She's going to be very <laughs> upset. <laughs> but funny. this allows me to at least stream both to Facebook and to um, to uh, YouTube at the same time. Oh, okay. It's, That's cool. It is. It is a little bit uh, delayed. That's interesting because I'm. I have it up here on YouTube, so I can see what's happening there versus mm -hmm. here. Um, and it's. I can see the questions come in oh. here, uh, but not show up here yet. But you know what? Gotcha. This allows me to have the interaction like we're having, yeah. which I think is far more important. Oh, far yeah. more important. So, um, well, tell me. Um, let, let's dive into your career a little bit here while we do it. You, you kind of summarized it. I know you did a, a great interview with uh, Rob Rusher on mm -hmm. his Cinematographer's Insight podcast. I think that was one of the first podcasts that he did, actually, wasn't it? I think I was the first episode, yeah. And Rob, Rob and I had known each other for a few years. And at the time I was working, I was probably into my second year working with Shane Hurlbut. I was working with his team. And, um, you know, we just – he was telling me about what he was doing and he was like, Hey, I'd love, you know, you've got an interesting story about at least to that point where I had got, I had gotten to in my career. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll come on. And, you know, I think at one point I was the number one view count. I don't know. Well, I mean, on, on the first people. episode for that entire week, you were definitely the number one <laughs> <laughs> for that week. Yeah. But no, it was really, it was a lot of fun. It was cool just to chat. No, with it, was, him and, it was cool. Cause like you and I have never sat down and really chatted just one-on-one -on -one <laughs> for any length of time. We've always been in social yeah. situations. Right. So it was, it was kind of cool getting the, the story that I would normally get to have with you one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Yeah. Um, it's very true. Yeah. Cause so, I think most of the times you and I have, exactly we've been together with other people and it's you know we're talking about our daily life in that context but we've never had that moment to really just get to know each other right or we're sitting down drinking a beer oh wow yeah. we're actually getting a good uh <laughs> we're getting a good coffee. we got rob eagle from hey, uh, tangerine hey, hey rob, rob you like the uh, the shirt come on 
<laughs> uh, Reach Films says, StreamYard isn't perfect, but it lets us connect with what's important. We've got sure. Ali. Hey, Ali. How's it going? Hi. Hi. We've got Alistair from Australia. Hi, What's Alistair. Up, What's up, man? I think we were, yeah, he and I were tweeting back and forth the other day. Oh, he's 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 fun, and he's got a beard that you know just yeah. screams respect. I'm envious. So this is this is uh, I've been in quarantine for six months, and this is where we're at. I'm just really? No, it's that's about <laughs> it's about two weeks. <laughs> this is uh, my beard's starting to grow back after I shaved it off, and my wife was displeased. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I I'm not, I won't lie. I did actually cut my own hair the other day, like just around the sides, and if you really look, you can see how bad it is. But I was just. I, it's funny because the other day I was like, no one's going to see me. What do I care? And then you and I started <laughs> and talking. Like, yeah, and then, you, the right, then you and I started talking and I'm like, oh, it's crap. I feel like I shouldn't have cut my hair. Like that was a bad right. idea. So I don't I, Who cares? I've been cutting my hair uh, for the last 20 years because I'm really? really cheap. I'm really good at it. I've been cutting. Uh, <laughs> I cut my daughter's hairs for years. No way. And I, I, I got really good at it back when, when YouTube like first came out. Mm -hmm. Everything I was searching for was how to cut women's hair because I don't want to spend thirty five dollars to send them yeah, to the salon. And I true. learned you got to cut vertically. Cut <laughs> yeah, you got to cut and, and no, strip. never, never this way because then you get yeah. this funky look. But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's it's a thing. So let's dive into a sure. little of your background, and then yeah. let's let's get into some of these uh, these uh, these shots that you've got here. So you started in. Pittsburgh, right? Or I started at Pittsburgh. Yeah. So I went to um, I went to college at Robert Morris University in a small school out by the airport in Pittsburgh. And um, they're known mostly for business. And then when I showed up, it started to get a little bit of a, a bigger media, like you know, broadcast program. And when I first started to get in the industry, I wanted to be uh, a sports anchor. I wanted my dream was to be an ESPN. And then when I got um, an opportunity to do it was like our Tuesday or Wednesday news, and I got to be the sports anchor for the school. I was terrible. I was so bad. I and we didn't really have a program at that time that was, you know, something like Syracuse University has a lot where they have instructors and classes that are focused just on if you want to be on air talent. Um, my school was focused on more of the behind the camera, but if you want to be on air talent, that was great. And there was an administrator who would work with the students when they became seniors and they became kind of like ready to, you know, move on to a professional career. Um, so I, I, then I was really kind of like, eh, I don't think I want to do this, you know, in front of the camera thing. I just didn't feel comfortable. And um, a friend of mine, I forget exactly who it was or what the conversation was, but it was like, you should try to see if there's any, you know, work study programs that, you know, maybe are in the TV program. And, there happened to be someone, they needed a camera operator to go out and shoot ENG style, you know, edit news gathering, TV style packages for our university sports program. We had a you know, colonial sports center because we were the colonials. And so my very first thing I ever really shot, like, like other than being like a kid, I remember shooting like a fake, uh, like myself and a friend of mine, we shot with my mom's video camera you know, one time shooting like our own little like late night show. This was like the, I was now like 18. This was like the second thing I'd ever shot in my life. So I went out to shoot track and field, shot the whole thing out of focus. It, it probably, I think half of it was overexposed because I didn't, I had no, like they just handed me a Panasonic, a Panasonic broadcast camera and just went, go shoot. And I was like, okay, here's a tape. You know, make sure you're recording sound. Okay. You know, here's how to plug in the XLR and do a mic and hand it to the reporter. Okay. You know, but nobody taught me about, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know what an iris was. I didn't know what anything was, how to, how to rack focus on a broadcast camera. None of it. Knew none of it. Um, so eventually that got better. Um, to keep the, sh the story can be super long, so I'll keep it short. But if you really yeah, want to know the details. We got hours. Yeah. But I'll, I'll keep it short because this is the boring part. I think the, what I'm doing now is more interesting. Um, and more about what people might want to know, but um, listen to Rob's podcast. I go to serious detail with that. And, right. And Scott, so I, Congress insight. Yeah. Um, but so I graduate school after doing a bunch of stuff there. A lot of great opportunity. I start working in the Pittsburgh Penguins. I started in sports and was a, a, pr a predator, producer, shooter, editor. So I would associate produce a couple in-house TV shows. Uh, would go out and shoot packages, and I would edit a lot of you know content, whether it was for our scoreboard or for 
a, a show that we produced for the regional sports network at the time, I think it was Fox. Um, and then, um, in 20, 12, I think it was, maybe 2011. I can't remember the exact year. Um, we moved into the new arena, uh, and I lost my job after the first season because the television show I was producing got canceled. They decided, you know what? We're going to do this show online, and then we're going to let go of the producer because you make too much money, which I really didn't, and we're going to hire a bunch of part-time people because it's cheaper because they don't have to get benefits, a 401k, and they don't have to pay them salary. So... I started freelancing then. And from that moment on, I was like, I don't want to do sports anymore. It just, to me, it was very repetitive. I, you know, I had a lot of really great mentors in that field that had said to me, like, you should start looking in other areas. Like, you know, we're not, it's not a, we're afraid you're going to take our job. It's a David, look at us. Like you have a lot of talent, excuse me. You have a lot of talent. You have a lot of passion that all of that will die if you do this for the next 30 years, like, you know, cause I was always pushing to try to do, you know, things like, oh, I want to do a sports package about this player. Let's go drive around. The, and the team would never let me do it. And um, they do that stuff now, which is just kind of funny, but they, they got, they started doing it once HBO came in and did their whole 24 seven series. And then the team was like, Oh, we should do this all the time. But I was, I had long gone since then. Um, well, in that process, I was really starting to just, I was always studying and, it was actually Alistair Chapman's XD cam user that kind of opened the doorway of like, I, cause we were shooting so much XD cam and I wanted to learn more and more and just how to make the, how to make it the image better. I just want to make it look more interesting and all kinds of stuff. And then I, I stumbled onto um, Vincent Laferay's blog. Uh, I think through Alistair probably linking to it. And then that led me to Shane's blog, Shane Hurlbut's blog. And Jumping a few, maybe a year ahead, Shane had an internship. I applied for that internship because I, at that time, started to learn what a director of photography was. And I thought, well, that would, I think that would be a lot of fun. I don't really want to be a director for all the things I was interested in. I said, but I think of being a DP would be a lot of fun. And getting to work with Shane really kind of fast tracked that knowledge of that education. You know, I was, this is 10 years ago now, and I was 24, and I came out and, um, I interned for him for a few months out in California and it was totally unpaid. You know, it was, a, uh, you know, he was actually a little bit reluctant at first of offering me the internship. He's like, well, you're gonna have to pay your own way. Like I'm mainly it's people here in LA that are doing it. I was like, I don't care. He's like, all right, go, come on out. Um, I, um, I learned a lot from him. Uh, I was, I was at that time, I was very um, intimidated by him. <laughs> it just like, you know, working for somebody that you really admired and, and was so open with their knowledge. I, um, <clears throat> I made one big mistake that somehow the universe corrected for me because Shane um, apparently had had it in his mind that I would eventually become his assistant and start working with him, you know, day to day kind of things. But I, we never had that conversation. And so when I, I literally, I was at a point where the place I was staying at was like, you know, we got somebody else about to move in because I was only living there for three months, the exact duration of the internship. I had been contacted from some previous employers in Pittsburgh that were like, hey, we got some jobs coming up. We heard you were like, I, I think I'd lied and said, like, I'm, I'm going to like a three month. I had a three month job or something. You know, I just I didn't tell them like, hey, I'm you know, going to an internship. So <clears throat> I, I had three hundred dollars to my name. That was all I had left. And because I, this time I'd spent all my money, I was paying rent, paying my student loans, any bills, I, I didn't default to anything. And um, so I, uh, I drove back to Pittsburgh in my car in three days. Don't ever do that. It's the most dangerous thing you could ever do. I almost died once, not even kidding. Um, it was like 15 hours every day to, you know, and then stopping and sleeping in a motel. Um, and then I started working and I thought in my head, I was like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll make enough money to, to get back out there and, and I'll find a new place to live and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, a, a month turns into six months, six to a year. And then next thing you know, two years later. So then um, Shane actually came to Pittsburgh to shoot a movie 
And by this time, I was trying to leverage that time of working with Shane as, you know, when I would go meet with people or try to meet people in the industry to make new connections, they would ask me what I've been doing. So I'd say, oh, I work for Shane Hurlbut, blah, blah. So some work had come from that. I actually started gripping um, because I had, Shane had actually got me some work as a grip on a movie before I left LA. And then I parlayed that in Pittsburgh into getting into that part of the industry. It was doing a lot of non-union stuff and, um, and it was slowly building, but I, I didn't push super hard because I was afraid of getting stuck as a grip and it wasn't what I really wanted to do. Um, but I was doing it enough to make a little bit of money and still kind of dabbling in the broadcast side of things. And then when Shane came to town, I got a phone call from like every person that was going to work in that movie saying, you need to call him. You need to call him. You need to you know talk to him. You should have dinner with him, blah, blah. You know, just like, you never know what might, what could happen. Maybe he'll put you on the movie or maybe, you know, who knows what will happen. Well, I'm glad I listened to, I think the final straw was um, uh, a camera operator named John Moyer. It was by Buzz. I was talking to Buzz and he was the only one that was kind of like, don't be an idiot. And I was like, ah. and, and, and Buzz has done, like he did Dumb and Dumber and he's done, you know, he he's done, you know, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. He's done, he's an amazing camera operator, a wonderful person. He lives in Pittsburgh and um, he travels all over the world, shoots all the time. And Shane and him actually work together quite a bit now. And um, so I did call, I called Shane. <laughs> I'll never forget the first thing he said to me was like, where the hell have you been? You know, just like, he, re he remembered who I was. And so we went to dinner, you know, we talked about everything, talked about what, it, you know, why I'd left and all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, he, in that dinner, says to me, he's like, well, um, I wish it stayed but maybe this is the right opportunity. You know, I've got this thing coming up and um, we're doing this, this whole membership site and I'd love, I'd love for you to come help me do it. And within like a week, it, we're, you know, okay, here's what I'm gonna pay you. You're gonna come live with the family and we're gonna do this on the kitchen table. And then within like a month, I'm flying out to his house and we're working on, here's what we need to do. And then in two months, I'm selling everything I have and moving out to the West Coast. So that's what got me back out here. Um, <clears throat> then yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much up to today. Then I worked for Shane for about three years and <laughs> Chris, that's what, um, <laughs> kind of, it is kind of like the Mr. Space Lady on the Jets. It, it was pretty close actually. It is pretty close. Um, Jets on. <laughs> yeah. So I worked for Shane for three years and then it just, it got to that point where, um, yeah, I was, I was ready to, um, kind of, fulfill that creative itch. You know, the company had grown my role. My role hadn't really diminished. I think I, I was just as valuable leaving as I was, you know, and Shane wasn't, he wasn't happy that I wanted to leave, which I understand, you know, he really, he really valued my, um, my input and I, and I really appreciated, you know, that value, but he understood why I wanted to go and, and we worked it out and I stayed on for a couple of months and kind of helped transition things out and, you know, and then I, you know, I started working as a full-time operator for about six months before I was able to kind of jump, kind of jump to starting to work on, you know, DPing full-time. So that kind of gets us to, to today, to where you maybe can ask me more questions or if other people have oh, yeah. questions. Oh I mean, yeah, we can, we can dive in. So I don't have to talk. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to make you talk. Don't worry. I know, I know, I know. But I, but I don't want to just. I, I figure I want to make sure that I. I know people are probably watching. They have questions, and I want to. I want to be as respectful. They're, to they're all waiting for you to go. Be... <gasps> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, anybody that has questions, feel free to drop them in below. If you're on Facebook, drop them in. If you're on YouTube, drop them in. I can. I can get them on here. We can get them to answer them. Uh, if you're on YouTube and you want a super chat, if you send enough super chats, I promise I'll buy them a beer or two. What's a super uh, chat? What's that? Uh, it's it's when they they basically tip you. They just oh, give you that's money. cool. Uh, and, and a lot of you know, if you're a big YouTuber, they use it basically to only answer those questions. I'm not oh. big, so it's equal opportunity. But you know, we might that's get cool. hundreds of questions coming in here. I'm, lear um, I'm learning about all this live stream and stuff. I'm, I'm oh, yeah. oh yeah, I'm into all this so stuff. I, it's fun. Right beforehand, I mean, literally, Weldon and I have been talking about this for well months, literally, about getting yeah. him on, but my internet has not supported this, <laughs> and finding StreamYard made it completely doable. So 15 minutes before the show, it's like, hey, Weldon, you want to get on? And he's like, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So he sent me a slew of his, uh, some stills, uh, 
Was there any of those BTS? I don't think any of those were. I don't right. think I sent you the BTS, but I, I think I do have some that I could send you. Yeah. Um, so uh, we will. Um, I, they're not in any order. And, and because I've cobbled all this together in 15 minutes, we'll be doing kind of a random. Here's some interesting things that, that I see. And then you can talk about them. Uh, sure. And then you can kind of dive into. And then if you know of a still that you sent me, you can tell me what it looks like and I'll find it. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's see here. Um, we, have, we also have a question is Shane's energy as infectious as everyone says. That's a good question. I think it, I think it is. Yeah. I think, um, you know, people obviously have their opinions of him, both positive and negative and, you know, they, ha people are going to have their reasons and that's fine. But I, um, I think when you work with someone who's really passionate about something that they really love, it's hard not to be, you know, infected by it and to, to have this level of, I don't, really, I don't really necessarily call it loyalty because I never really felt like I needed, needed to be loyal to Shane. I think it just, you know, Shane, you know, he really cared. He really cared about me. He really cared about the people that would come around and help him with creating content and work for him. And, um, you know, I think that, I guess that is the definition of loyalty to a certain extent, but it it kind of goes beyond almost, it really does become family. You know, like I really, even to this day, like Shane and I just, we just talked the other day and, um, you know, we still talk every now and again, maybe not as much as we both would like to, you know, just for whatever reason, we're just, you know, both, we, everybody gets busy in this business and you forget to talk to people. <laughs> but, um, right. but every time I get on the phone with them, it's still, it feels like I'm talking to, you know, my big brother, you know, it's like, you know, somebody that, that I know really cares and like, yeah, no, he, I I would say it's really infectious to work with someone like him, and you know, and that's and that's what I try I try to I try to remember that whenever I'm working, that I want to be that kind of person. I want to be as positive as possible, as you know, as upfront as possible, and and I want to make it enjoyable for the people that I work well, with. I, I want them to come I, back. I mean, everything that I know about you and all the times that we've socialized and and our our. Um, <laughs> Our friendship has been, you have that infectious kind of positivity, which is really, really good. And I think it, it probably serves you really well in this industry because you're extraordinarily creative and you're very positive. And I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I have, but I don't really hear you being negative about anything. I mean, I mean, there's bad days. I get it. Yeah, but I mean, sure. it's, 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 you you kind of have a very overall positivity that even rubs off on me, and I I like That's to cool. take energy from other people, which you know I was like to say, uh, Hatchet. I'm going to get to your question in just a second, but uh, <laughs> Derek has a question here. What was your big breakout project? My big breakout project. Um, I'd say probably the big breakout project for me was probably um, I did an Imagine Dragons video back in um, two th uh, it was a year and a half ago, I guess, right? somewhere around then, 2000, end of 2018. Yeah, but like September or so called Natural, it's a natural video. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the first real like huge project I did. But I guess in, in, a, in some senses, I guess because of that director, because I work with Joseph Kahn a lot and Joseph directed that. But I think in a way, I, I'll, I'll probably roll it back to further than that because I got connected with Joseph right before he did his last feature film called Bodied. It was an independent movie that he produced and, and got you know private funding. I started working with him. Um, we met talking through Twitter, and I had I had access to something he was interested in seeing, and so I brought that to the table, and that that opened the door, and. Then he took a look at my work. It was like, you haven't really done anything yet as far as like big directors and things, like, but your stuff looks great. Like he saw a short film that I had done and was like, that all this stuff looks like it looks great. And he, he called me up, we went and had lunch and he was like, I got this movie coming up. Um, you know, love to have you uh, be a part of it. And I was like, okay. And so then a couple months before that, he, he calls me out of the blue. I'm in Maryland visiting family. And he's like, Hey, have you ever flown a drone before? And I'm like, you know, I don't really know him that well. So I'm literally, uh, yes. Cause I'm just like, in my quick mind, I'm thinking if I have to fly a drone, I'm just going to hire, like I'm going to hire a team. And that's probably what he means. But 
I don't, okay. Well, so he um, wanted me to go out and shoot background plates for the Country Music Awards 50th anniversary music video. It was this huge mashup and it won an American Music Award, like best video of the year or something like that. And so I went to, to Oregon with uh, a friend of mine who's a producer that lives in Oregon. And we traveled all around the state with a drone team. And um, I had a, I had a, a dragon and an Alexa mini. I had one in, in a movie and I had one built in the gimbal for the uh, drone. And I would shoot little, just like slider moves and push ins on the movie. And then we'd get up and we'd float around and shoot all kinds of crazy stuff to just, you know, not really knowing what we were gonna, we were gonna get, but that was my first big break with Joseph to start building that relationship. And then it, and then he started bringing, I instantly became, his movie guy i started you know movie operating at that point and i'm not gonna lie that first job of going out and shooting all those background plates and all that stuff <clears throat> i literally because joseph sometimes can be you know working on three or four different projects at a time so information can be at, come at a premium um i you know I'm, I'm the second unit guy going out to shoot background plates so in my mind i'm like all right you're just going to get a lot of stuff and they're going to use what they're going to use which is essentially what happened and um, so we, we go to his house, we're meeting his house. And at the last second, we talk about like what I'm going to shoot. I'm like, all right, this is exactly what I was thinking. We're good. And then he's like, hey, what do you think about doing of getting some of these moves? So I was like, oh, I'm just going to use like a data dolly or something like that. He's like, why don't you use the Movi? He's like, I have, a, I have my Movi. You can just take mine. And it was like literally sitting in his house. And I'm like, okay. And the reason why I say, okay, is because I had never used a Movi in my life ever. <laughs> I had been around it because Shane was using it all the time, but working for, Sh I was still at this time, mind you, I was still working for Shane. And so Shane was giving me a lot of opportunity to jump off and go do little things and shoot stuff. So it was, it was challenging because I didn't want to say like, well, I don't know how to use it. So in my mind, I'm like, I don't just figure it out. So I, I literally, I'm calling, I think I called Chris Hare. I probably called Rub Rusher. I called you know, Rich Moriarty, I called Free Flat, called everybody I knew to, to talk to people um, about the movie. And Chris was very helpful in just giving me the basics of, because he was like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm literally just shooting plates with it. I just need to like, you know, slide past, you know, grain, you know, in, of, you know, stuff in the ground or whatever. And he's like, the leaves and stuff. And he was like, oh yeah, you just need to know how to balance it. And so I watched all the videos online. There were a lot of, you know, just little details that were left out that Chris really filled in. So I think that was the really the first big break that then, you know, like a year and a half later led to the, like the launching break of where I, of what's getting me to where I am today. So, which became the Imagine Dragons video was that big break. Right, I'm going to throw one more question up here and then we're going to dive into your stuff because I want those questions to queue up during that. But sure. Ollie has a good uh, question. It's like, what's the best, best path for an upcoming piece today? And how does it differ from 10 years ago? Ooh, um, that's a good question. Cause I think, I don't think there's necessarily a best path because I think it fits your personality. Um, for me, it was, yeah, I, I always had this vision of, I needed to be a grip for five to seven years, then be a key grip and then be an electrician and then be a gaffer. And then by the time I was, you know, I like somehow in my mind, I'm like, I need to be 35 and be shooting, you know, before I'm 35, you know, cause I don't want to be left behind because I was really, I was, I did a movie where the DP, his name's Jim Frona. Um, and now Jim, Jim does a lot of stuff for Amazon. He does, uh, he did Amazon's transparent, um, he did, he's uh, Pretty Little Liars on HBO. Jim's a fantastic cinematographer, but he spent a long time as a gaffer. And when he was 41 or 40 was when we did this movie um, uh, called, uh, so Catherine Hahn, uh, the name of the movie escapes me right now, but I can share it, I can look it up later. Um, that was his first like big break as a cinematographer. Like he had done some commercials and stuff like that. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, he had maybe done like two or three commercials. Yeah, you know, I was 23 at the time. So, I, you know, I didn't know anything. And I got really freaked out by that. I was like, oh, my God, I'll be full, like, I'm going to be almost 20 years later. I'll get a chance to shoot something that I really care about and be like, ah, oh, you know. So I think you really, I think you have to, to know where you're at and know what you, you have to, 
in some senses, know what you don't know and keep pursuing in those areas. And like, for me, it was, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to keep working as a grip and then I'm going to try to work a little bit as an electrician because I just, I didn't know certain things that I wanted to know about power and about, you know, building large rigs and stuff like that. Just, just to have a better understanding of it, just so I could, you know, as much as, you know, I have a, um, very, my DIT's husband is, um, is he, he works with Chivo and, and all the, you know, Roger Deakins, the big cinematographers all the time is a key rigging grip. And we've had a couple conversations where I think I used to think this way 10 years ago, where he's like, you're, you're never going to know what I do. He's like, you're never going to understand it unless you're just doing it for a living. That's why you hire those people to do those things. But having a basic understanding of what a grip is responsible for and what they do is, is a great thing because it helps you discover how much time is needed. Um, you know, and we're talking about the things that he is building could be he's going to need two and a half weeks to build it for something that's going to last, you know, 10 days of a shooting schedule. You know, so to understand that this is where it's going to save money in production, this is how much it costs, and this is how much prep time we need, like, that's where I want to get to in my career as a, as a DP or, you know, I want to get to shooting large narrative projects of television and feature film. And that's what it, that knowledge only serves you when you get to that level. So I think, you know, you just have to take the opportunities that present themselves to you and you have to, you just have to, it's such a, it's such a tough answer to give. I don't, I don't fully know. I mean, cause what was, it said, how does it differ from 10 years ago? Um, the I industry think, changed too. The industry <laughs> changed. I think, I think it differs from 10 years ago. Cause I think of 10 years ago, we, we were already in a digital space as far as cameras. Yep. The 5d was, was really pushing an evolution of, um, it was, bringing the affordability factor down. Right. I think it's different in the sense of, I think it's made like lighting has gotten cheaper. You know, lighting has gotten more accessible. You know, where you know, I used to think for the longest time, I was like, oh, I'll never be able to like, you know, just, you know, being a 20 some year old kid going, I'm never going to do a job with an 18 K. You know, I'm never going to be able right. to afford to do that. And then when you really think about it and you break it down, it's like, the price of an 18k before manpower and before, you know the the lamp is is like 300 400 dollars a day that's not unattainable you know if you go tungsten if you go to like a you know a 20k tungsten which is not the equivalent of an 18k hmi so no. close the cost of that is significantly less you know and then granted you got to you have to mix in the power and manpower and stuff like that but you know it's it, i think of like i'll sometimes i'll stand on a job that i'm doing like, for example, I did, um, I wish I had, I should have pulled this stuff now. This would be great stuff to talk about. I did a, um, a Jonas Brothers music video in December of the end of last year. And this was with, with Joseph Kahn. And so we're standing in a basketball gymnasium. The concept of this video is that we're going to mirror three 80s, you know, three not 80s movies because we did Greece as well, but three older movies. You know, we're going to mirror a, a piece of Greece, a piece of... Um, uh, the Tom Cruise movie where he slides in his underwear, risky business. And we're going to mirror um, uh, John Cusack's with the holding up the boom box movie that the name of the film escapes me at the moment. Um, so uh, I, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. But so we're in the, um, the gy this gymnasium in, um, you know, modern basketball gym. And we're standing there with the production designer, Vance, and we're talking about how we're going to light it. It's basically we're going to have like, 50 people like filling this gym and they're doing like a dance competition, just like Greece. And so that particular time of day, we were there, you know, if we're looking if you're thinking of it in your head, imagine a basketball gym that's got windows about 30 feet up and the windows are about 10 feet high. And um, just, just at the top part of, of the gymnasium, you know, the, the rest of it's just a, a concrete wall. So on one side of the windows, you have the sun is outside. It's kind of blasting through and creating some hard shadows on the, on the floor of the gym. And then the other side is just ambient that's you know, spilling over from you know, being letting sunlight. In. So Joseph kind of says to me, he goes, I like the look of this right now. He goes, I like 
how we kind of have the, the sun kind of coming in from one side. I like the contrast level. He's like, if we can, he's like, I'd like to have these hard shadows on the floor the entire time. And I was like, and my gaffer just looks at me like, you're, you're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> just like because it's a music video you know like he's looking at me like i know what you're gonna ask me for and i'm just like eh, you know so in that instance i had in that in that instance because i haven't done thousands of thousands of projects i hadn't come across something yet where i had to mathematically and physically figure out how i was going to do that so we're talking about all the different options and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, this was a scenario where, you know, we talked about doing, you know, using a BB light, which a BB light is a big crane system with, I think it's, it's like 16, 6Ks, you know, 6K HMIs all spread out. It's, it's used to just blast light, but you have individual control over the fixture. So you can, you know, you can, you know, pan them all over the place and send the light everywhere. Um, we talked about using a hundred K soft sun. Um, and it was, so there's a really great reference of a 200 K soft sun, which is made by luminous systems. If you look at the movie first man, when they did the night scenes in first man to be on the moon, that light is two 100 K soft suns on top of each other on a crane. And it's just the, that it's, it's two bulbs and it's, it was made into a 200K to emulate the light on the moon. And it's beautiful right. quality of light. Um, I thought about going with that, but I don't, I think I want to push this over budget. What we ended up going with were six 24K HMIs, which have wow. like another, it's like, a, I forget what the extra output is compared to an HMI, an 18K um, on scissor lifts. We put that we with three scissor lifts, so two per lift, and just straight up and just blasting it. And we then inside the gymnasium, I had an 18k on our on a crank stand on a roller, and then on um, I think I had a I had a, another 4k par and a 4k par as like a little edge light if I needed it, just kind of rolling around. And then I had another 4k that I could bounce into a 12 by 20 ultra bounce if I needed to add a little fill if the contrast was a little too much. <clears throat> there was a point where I, all that light is on and I still have the ambient. I st I'm still fighting the ambient. I had on the, on the other side of the, the building, I had um, solids placed, you know, cause we never were going to see the windows. I saw this place right. all along, along the window. So it was like a hundred foot by 20, you know, just solids on the outside to just drop down. And um, I originally had, a half soft frost that it was going to drop down in front of the 24 Ks because I felt like I needed to spread it more. But then I said, I told my key grip, I said, you know, leave it up, turn on the lights for now. But if I need it, we'll drop it down. And I feel like it's one of those things where you, you always plan for it. And it definitely turned into a situation of where it was like, I'm looking at it going like, Oh my God, it's not enough light. It's not enough light. It's not enough. It's not enough. And I take a lot of solace in the fact that like, like even last night I was watching a round table on, on cook optics TV where all six of the cinematographers, like one of them shoots for Game of Thrones. One of them was uh, Philip, uh, I forget his last, Philip, uh, he shot Casino Royale, the first Daniel Craig Bond movie. And like, they've all done like massive stuff. And every single one of them was like, you know, when I, when I you know, I, we figured this whole thing out, and I'm like, it's probably not gonna be enough light. I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, I do that too. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so I mean, like, there's always, I think it's like, you know, when you think of how things have changed in 10 years, you know, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have it. You know, you're still going to use a lot of the same tools that exist today. And I think it's hard not to get wrapped up in like the new technology, the new LED stuff and think like, well, this is going to be all the things that replace what we're doing. You know, like, sure. Like in some of the, and this kind of, maybe this parlays us into some of the car stuff. Like when I shoot cars, I like to use, I try to find things, A, that save us money in production, B, can still give me the quality of light that I want, and C, I can have a big, huge source if I need it. Like if I had to put a top light on a car, but I can diffuse it right away. Um, if you can find 
um, is a really good example in the, the shots. There's a picture of a girl walking a dog next to a car in one of the, it's one of the first groups of photos I sent you, Scott. I was say, it's a really good segue here to pulling yeah. up some. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was a great that was a great roundtable discussion, Allie. Yeah. Uh, the the one where she's walking in front of it. Uh, I put it up. I th I I think that's the one okay. where she, she might be in front of it. Let me. Yeah, that that'll work. I know which one you're talking about. There's a bunch of other girls. Yeah. There's the one was... with the dog. There's one with her walking in front of it. Either one of those is good. It was definitely where I was going next was to uh to, to oh, do not that that, case. not that one. That's the rules. Oh, well, well, I see a but leash, this, but this <laughs> kind of worked. Well, yeah, she does have like a thing. I don't know if she was supposed to be walking a dog or not. Um, Let me see if I can find which one you're talking about here. But I can kind uh, of, I can kind of briefly go ahead and this. introduce this segment. Sure, I'll uh, talk about, I'll talk about this one a little bit because, um, so I, I did a spot in Madrid, Spain, um, for Rolls Royce last, maybe this time last year, maybe a little later, um, that came out this summer, and it was super like, you know, very European style, you know, which is uh dark moody colorful um stuff that i like to do you know i like i like doing you know an american style project which you know i think you can see the difference if you look at the at my work um it was hard for me to book this job they um i literally found out like the i i woke up at 10 a.m and at noon i was getting on a flight at 3 p.m to go do the job because I'd known about it for a week, but my agent was just like, they're not sold on you yet because they want a European DP. <laughs> the saving grace for me of getting the job was the fact that it paid the U it was a UK production and nobody wanted to take the job because of the rate. It wasn't a terrible rate, but I certainly get a lot more when I shoot, you know, non UK productions because UK productions just don't pay a lot. That's, that's why a lot of big, you know, that's why someone like Roger Deakins left England and came to LA. It was, you, it's too difficult to make money staying in that market. Um, that's, that's just the truth. They just don't pay their DPs. Um, I did so, find that one photo, but let's, let's do the rule. Yeah, so let's, I'm just going to flip through these real quick. Oh, different one. <laughs> <laughs> so here we, here we have a nice little emblem. That emblem costs what? Three or $4. Yeah, um, super cheap. So, so you, this, you, I showed everybody a, a few of those stills. What was the, like you said, it's dark and moody. Mm -hmm. um, what was your approach to lighting this and, and, as, um, as far as like once I got into it or beforehand, like, um, well, I mean, you didn't, obviously you said you had very little input or very little time ahead of time, but yeah. like to, to plan this out, to give it the look that you got to, what was your, um, mm, the plan? <laughs> I think a lot of it was, we, we, we did spend a lot of time, um, so I, I, when I landed in Spain, I flew, it, it was a, I spent, I was awake for 28 hours because I, fl I left LA landed immediately scouted. did the first, the first scout without the crew, but just with the director. And the next day we started, um, we started diving into like, we spent like three days looking at different, you know, commercial projects and tons of, yeah, Rob's got it right. The Phil Mayhew from, uh, was the Casino Royale DP. Thank you, Rob. Right. Um, we spent about three days um, looking at different references and planning things out. I think as far as, I like for me, I find it way easier to shoot night stuff than to shoot daytime things because you can get away with a lot less you know, you can use a lot less light and it's, it's a lot easier to use led light at night because you're not trying to balance a window or you're not trying to, you know, fight the sun. And, you know, you'd be surprised what just a little sky panel an S60 or an S30 is able to accomplish. And like to go back to that, that shot, the previous shot that you just clicked, um, the one of the, the close of the headlight, the close of the headlight. So, okay. so for example, that is literally just the headlight turned on in this particular space above the car, there's a row of Astera tubes, which are four foot 
LED tubes that are right. wirelessly controlled and battery powered. And I had a Leco kissing the emblem, like just like squeezed all the way down. And then yeah, okay. some bounce cards. Now I'm shooting, um, this was, we, we shot Alexa LF and, and Alexa Mini. It wasn't the Mini LF. It was just a regular Mini because the Mini LF wasn't out at the time. And I'm shooting on Panavision C&E series anamorphic okay. glass, which the fastest lens in that set of lenses is a, two, a, a T23, which for night can be fairly slow. I did right. push a lot of these shots to like, I basically rated the Alexa at 1280. And I shot a 1280 ISO the whole time. Um, there were a couple of times where I had to push a 1600, but I never really had to go that much further. And the LF certainly is more sensitive than the standard, uh, you know, Alexa cameras. You know, it can that sensor could be pushed a little bit harder. And you know, I, I'm, I almost have a feeling for this particular shot, I may have actually rated the camera down. I may have come down a little bit to adjust for the headlights because you think about it in this context. I can't dim the headlights. I have to right. expose Those are them. a constant, yeah. Yeah, and I and so then I have to treat everything else to match. You know, and so when you think about if I'm shooting a daytime, you know, interior uh, or exterior, if I'm utilizing what the sun is giving me, I have to either match what the sun is doing or I have to play against it in a pleasing way. And this is no different. You know, this is no different. So it's it was. Um, it was, I think the, the thing that made this job, you know, the, the complicated and difficult was more that it was fast. You know, we had a lot to shoot. I think we shot it all in three days and it was a lot of company moves, you know, like, um, you know, there's the, the shot before of the car driving that you had that had the little red hint in it um, before that one. This is in a, like a corporate complex where we shot, one, two, three. It was four different setups around this complex. The the first shot you guys saw of like the girl like reaching towards the emblem, that was like 200 yards away on the other side of the uh, the complex. Um, so like this shot, yeah, like it's that's on the other side. So I had I had to have two separate teams going at the same time just to, you know, to get everything working. You know, it was and it was a big crew. And the hard the hardest part about working in Europe for me, I don't, I just, I personally don't like to do it this way, but you know, you work within it, um, their systems, they, the Gafford uh, handles both lighting and the shaping of the light as far as the rags and grip and stuff like that. Grips are considered camera support, you know? So I always had a dolly grip with me. I had somebody right there and the grip team was three people, you know, to manage building a jib or a dolly, you know, or, you know, helping out with the Ronin, that kind of thing. But, you know, it's, I don't like to do it that way just because I'd rather have a key grip that is focused on shaping the light. So you can delegate to different, two different people. Whereas if you're working with just the gaffer, the gaffer kind of has to, you know, okay, I've got everything you're saying, but now I'm going to just say all the lighting stuff. And it's a, it's a lot. And now I'm going to say all the grip stuff. And now I have to pick out which group within the same team of people is going to do it all. And, you know, if you, if that, <clears throat> even if that takes one minute to do that and you do that over the course of a few days, you could have lost an hour of, of shooting. Think of how many right. shots you can get in an hour, you know, so stuff like that. What, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of atmosphere there. Is that just a wonderful Europe day or is, did you, did you fog? Or? <laughs> we, we definitely fogged. Yeah, we had um, – the art department had two big smokers that they ran around with and they would just, you know, go crazy with it and, and throw smoke. And, like, we had a we had a really nice stretch in this um, – of, of – of a – Complex? Of the complex, yeah, that we could drive. And so we would start at one end and we'd just drive and then we'd turn around and drive back. And that became like this little area that we had full control without, you know, we, we didn't have to worry about time, you know, so to speak. No, no what were, were you using time. for the red light? Because it looks like on the hood there, you can kind of see two spots of light. Like you had a gelled two two different lights or? Um, I'm trying to remember because I know, I believe what that is, even though it looks motivated from above, I'm trying to remember exactly how I did it because the back right is like a 4K on a crank stand, 
just kind of blasting just the, you know some blue light and the camera is rated super cool like i'm shooting like 2100 eyes so, or 2100 oh, kelvin okay. it's super cool um i want to say it's, it may just be a sky panel i'm trying to remember how i did it interesting um i'm fairly well, certain it does, it was a sky panel yeah because it has the, that first little red looks like it's in a rectangular shape the second one yeah. it may just be distorted by the hood it might i think it's just distorted by the hood because i'm pretty i had stuff on the ground bouncing up and kind of wrapping like the the building we were shooting against is very helpful because it was somewhat reflective like it had you know it kind of just threw light like you'd hit it and there was nobody in the building so i didn't have to worry about like you know interfering anybody's work and this is like right. three in the morning so it it just shoots light all over the place you know so that was fairly simple this <laughs> one right mm -hmm. here i i really like this look because it's it's hard to blast a bunch of light from behind but get a nice clean image interior uh yeah it was I think the key, the key for me for night stuff, and this is something that I've learned from the other cinematographers, is that you know backlight with night is is really going to help the image pop. You know, and it's it's very much even when I was watching that that roundtable last night on Cook, the Cooks a YouTube channel, like that's they all because they were talking about night night exteriors. It's you know it's exactly what you want to do if that's the look you want to go for, and for this it was. That is the big kind of halations in the back that are just like this warmer kind of plume or some practicals that we put in that are um, a sodium vapor. And they're just that actual area where that little guy is standing is a like, um, it's a, uh, a car wash. So we put some Astera tubes inside the car wash because we had a little effect of like them flickering in the opening shot of the video. So we just left them on in there, and then um, lighting him is is uh, I'm fairly certain I'm just pushing some sky panels through diffusion. I think it might just be one sky panel or maybe two um, on the right side, you know, driver the I guess passenger side door for Europe. Um, just giving him that little like there's a little on his left side of his cheek. There's a little blue face, and then and then I'm just taking a leco and just passing through some some light just just to kind of. They wanted some cool effects and we looked at some different just moving light and stuff like that. And we actually tried to do more moving light, but we were just going so fast. It was really hard to rig things up and do stuff other than just what we could pan or tilt. You know? There's a really hard source hitting his neck. Is that just a reflection from a mirror? Or was... That's that's the Leco. That's the Leco. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's just the Leco. And I found, so we can uh, move to the this other shot you were talking about initially. I found the okay. girl walking the dog. Yeah, so that one. So um this was i did a music video slash sponsored commercial for uh for fiat for an artist named ava max and we shot in um this was in milan italy this is in the piazza del, del my italian is terrible the piazza del duomo so it's the duomo square and <clears throat> So we're shooting the Fiat Panda, which was a new car they were putting out, and we're shooting her. The background is, you know, those are lights that I put in. We just we were trying to create some streaks of light. Um, all the pillars, you know, you, if you really study it, you can see the imperfections of it. Now it's bugging, it, bugging me. Uh, <laughs> you can see it's all just a bunch of little up lights that are just battery powered. Um, they're like these little battery powered like rock and roll lights that just you know are, you can change. They're not like color accuracy isn't that great, but it just gives you a little accent. And then above the car, and the most important thing, and this is what I was getting to, was you know having the ability to you know top light a car or top light anything. You know, I think this is where when you talk about what has changed in ten years. Ten years ago, I would have had to take you know tungsten space lights or um, you know nine lights. You know that have individual bulb control. If you look at a bulb, a nine light, or or um, you know just different rigs where you can you can have individual control of bulbs so that you can dim them down. You know, dim in the sense of like I could turn them off. But the problem with turning bulbs on and off when you're trying to create a, a nice large top source is that the source gets shrunk as you turn the bulbs off. Or if you do it from the inside out, you get a hollow center to it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So this, you know, I'm using Light Gear's light tile in this, an eight foot by eight foot piece with 
a skirt around it, diffusion underneath the light tile, and it gives me the ability to dim it all the way down to 5% or 1% or dim it to 100%, and I'm not worried about losing the spread and the wrap. You know, I can I can bring it down to a point, and, I, and I'm sure I dim this down from 100 down to like 80% so I can keep the focus a little bit more on her. And it's on what's called a champion crane, which the reason why you know, normally we could probably put this on a scissor lift or a, or a, not a, scissor, a, a condor or a cherry picker, whatever you call it, um, you know, when you're hanging, suspending it from the bottom. We had to put it on a champion crane because, you know, you see all this, this tile, the, the, the original right, reflection of where it's all reflected. This is essentially a walkway. Now you can't drive cars, motorbikes, nothing. And so there are concrete barriers to this, area and they would not allow it to come in and so oh. when we picked the spot of the car it was like we literally picked like the closest spot possible to where we could still get the camera get the wide shots we wanted we could still see the cathedral and not have to go like okay what do we you know oh we're stuck you know and I, i'll never forget the producer was like do you really need a champion crane and i'm like i pulled the gaffer over and i'm talking to him and i'm like can you do this with anything else other than a champion crane? He's like, no. And I'm like, and I walked away. I'm like, I'm trying, but I don't know what you want me to do. Like you guys are putting me in, you put me in a box, you know? So, but I think that's, the, that's the big difference is where if you use, if you use older fixtures, that's where the new stuff has really made a big impact of being able to control. You can still control your spread, but you can do it at 5%. You know? Were all those practical lights, all the ones that are on the actual buildings, those are. All the right ones. Here. Uh, all the ones down low at street level, I put in the ones above right. were naturally there and we got lucky. Um, okay. we, we had no control over whether light could be turned on or not, but I had control over what I, I was allowed to put anything anywhere. And it was all, we were racing against time. Uh, so I, we had to be wrapped by five 30 in the morning because the sun came up <laughs> and I wanted to put stuff on the Duomo, but I didn't have time. I didn't have enough battery powered stuff and it just, and the manpower wasn't huge. So the way it was, it was a lot of people, but in the context of what we were doing, it wasn't enough to really just like push everybody, you know, and that's where you gotta be careful too. So what camera and lens package were you using here? This was Sony Venice and it was the Zeiss Supremes, um, not the Radiant Supremes. It's the first, you know, the set, the first set that came out. Um, this was the first time I'd ever shot that, um, that kind of crazy with those things. So that's a good question here from Allie. What's the widest you would go when shooting cars? Um, the widest, I, th I think it really depends on the context of what you're shooting, but for like a car commercial, um, tighter is obviously like, if you can go 35 or tighter and pull back physically, it's going to compress the car and make it prettier versus if you're like at 18 and you're closer, but if for some reason you, you know, that is the look or the style that you want. But um, like, I like to use the, if I'm shooting spherical, I like to use the Fujinon premier 18 to 80 because it's a T2. It's a right. really pretty lens. It's, it's, it's very nice lens. Yeah. Yeah. It's expensive. Um, rental, not too crazy. I don't own one. I don't need to, <laughs> but um, it's, you know, I stay in that middle half of the lens, you know, that 35 to 75, 80 millimeters, you know, side of it. But, you know, depending on, you know, if you can get to, like, if you're looking at some of the, like the closest to the logo or something, and maybe you'll get to a 24 and you'll physically come closer to it as long as it doesn't distort. Um, but like a shot like this, like this was on a 50 mil, um, you know, we're trying to compress as much as we can, but we're further right. back, you know, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, and I'm guessing you couldn't go too much further back because those those posts would show up. <laughs> I probably I had a I had another probably 20 feet where I could I could have moved back, you know, but we got lucky because there was like this weird, uh, like a, not weird, but like a big uh, drainage grate that like we didn't want to park the car on top of it. So it bought me like another eight feet. So it was like, oh, right. I can't park it there. And the producer's like, oh, <laughs> okay, fine, you know, like yeah, that wouldn't look good. I'm like yeah, exactly. God. All right, let's switch to uh, Pepsi commercial here. I, I'm sure. I'm only knowing the, uh, the ones that I can see a product in it, so I know which one. <laughs> sure. 
So here we go. With... So is this one? Okay. Um, yeah. So I did. So I did a series of Pepsi commercials in Argentina um, last summer, and then in January of this year, got a call where the agency really liked what we had done for Pepsi in Argentina and said, "Hey, we want you to do something similar for." You know, set up the director. We want to do similar stuff for uh, vanilla and cherry Pepsi, with our own little, you know, uh, own little twist. Um, it's just tough for me to talk about this one because I hate it. <laughs> to be honest, I hate this one so much because I I don't like what I do with it. Oh, we lost Scott. Hey, welcome back, Scott. No, I'm here. I, I was I, I was trying to get you more centered, but I guess. That's oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's just, I'm just, I'm trying to not beat myself up. So with this one, but this is a perfect example of like, you know, I, I it, it still looks good. Um, I'm not, I, I, you know, it's hard in commercials. You don't always get in commercials and music videos to be invited to the color, color treatment. And sometimes the director doesn't even get invited. You know, the agency just, you know, okay, thanks guys. And then they're off doing the thing. The hard part for me was I really, I was using tungsten light to save money. Mm -hmm. Over on an, in an overall sense, I also wanted to use tungsten light for her skin because her skin really popped in tungsten. Because I I didn't have a like I didn't have any chance to really like test this theory out. It was more just like looking at photographs of her before the uh, for the shoot. <laughs> don't worry, Kevin. I'm gonna tell you what I don't like. About it. Yeah, you know, I was I was the same way. I'm like, why are you beating yourself up? This is beautiful. Um, I really wanted. I really wanted a more neutral tone on her overall and less like I wanted the background like in the, you know, to feel a little more creamy. Um, but the agency liked it because they felt like it, it was like, well, this is vanilla Pepsi. And I'm like, ah, but I don't want it to be vanilla. Like, eh. <laughs> yeah. And so I, what I was really going for is there is a Amazon commercial with Ellen DeGeneres and her wife that came out um, before Christmas that Greg Frazier shot. And it's very natural. It's you know, a, it's more in that neutral space as far as the color, and maybe there's a little bit more contrast. Um, that was what I was initially going for. How I ended up here was in the pre-light day, we're lighting both a black psych set, like a completely black, you know, with with all these crazy lights, and then starting to pre-light this. The both the director and the agency were with me, and as we're lighting this, the agency kept talking about wanting a softer overall feel. And there were other like things they were talking about and some references they were showing me. And I started to just get into my head and I started to think like, well, maybe I should, you know, do this a little bit different, do that. So I started, you know, I took two uh, 12K tungsten lights, two T12s, and put them behind a 12 by 20, I think it was full grid with a 12 foot LC, a 12 by 20 LCD on it. Um, and that was her key light. And then wrapping around, you know, closer to the left side of camera is a, a mini nine light bouncing into a 12 by 12 ultra bounce. with so just like a couple bulbs turned on if I needed it. And well, and then I had a top light. There was a, um, an eight by, or no, it was a 12 by, we made it 12 foot by 12 with a LCD top light with two Colt LEDs excuse me, there are these LED space lights over over uh, top. And they were double diffused because they had their skirts on them. And then they had the 12 by, um, it was probably another, like a half grid with an LCD, you know, light control device. And I just, I don't know. I just think there's a part of me that I didn't necessarily get what I wanted. I guess I, it still looks good, but it's not where I was initially hoping to go. And I think it's sometimes... That's something, you know, my career is still very young. I'm still very young. I'm 34. Um, Scott laughs. <laughs> so, you, you young, ter oh, young youngin. <laughs> but I think there's just the part of me that, like, you know, I, you know, obviously if you really care about something and then you're putting your name on it, you're putting your stamp on it, you really believe in it, and you want it to be, like, the best thing you've ever done. Every job, you're only as good as your last right. job. You know, it's – if you ain't first, you're last, you're, you're okay, Bobby, you know, but um, it's like, I just, you know, I just, I, I kind of was disappointed in myself in some ways because I just didn't get to where I really wanted to be, you know, and the director still liked it at the end of it, but like even he and I talked about it afterwards and I, 
And he was like, I thought we were going in a different direction. He's like, I still really like this. I was like, and I explained it to him. He was like, he's like, oh, okay. He's like, I, he's like, I get what happened. He's like, but. He's like, yeah, he's like, I wouldn't, don't be disappointed in it. He's like, but I think at the same time, he's like, just, he's like, listen to the agency, but he's like, I've been doing this a long time. He's like, you still got to go with your gut. You got to do what you believe in and they're still going to like it no matter what. I'm like, that's true. You know, I was like, you know, it's like, and it kind of, you know, this was the the limbo world that we were in and I wasn't a hundred percent happy with how I lit her in the space either. I feel like I overlit her just a little bit too much because the agency was kind of pushing me towards this. And the problem is, and I, and this happens sometimes and it's hard to, you have to think of all the, think of all the players you have in, think of it like a sporting event. Think of it like a basketball game. If the point guard doesn't pass the ball the right way, it doesn't get it to Kobe the right way. It doesn't happen the right way. That kind of thing. So you can't control everything. You can't be, you know, super control. It. Not that anybody did anything wrong. Nobody did anything wrong. But it's just the matter of the light gets in place. The first time you're turning on a sky panel, even when it's plugged into a board, it's going to turn on 100%. You know, if, so if the camera is lined up because I'm looking at it and I'm lighting to it, and then I start tweaking and shaping it down, and all of a sudden I hear whispers of, like, we want it brighter on her face like you had it when you first when that light first turned right. on. Sometimes you the image gets sold before you're even ready to sell the image. You know, and that's a hard thing to deal with in commercials. And I think when you, I have to take some resolve in the in the aspect of if I'm fortunate enough to get to a level where I'd like to be. You know, I want to I want to get to, and I and I solely only want this because it gives you flexibility in some aspects. If you get to a point where you're like Greg Frazier, I can hear your dog. That's hilarious. Yeah, he's stuck. <laughs> he's like, I'm, he's like, I'm bored. Um, so if you get to a level of like a Greg Frazier or a, um, you know, Roger Deakins or a Chivo, just building that mysticism gives you some leeway. Like, not, you know, that's, I hope, I hope I have that luxury of getting to that, li- at that point in my life. I, you know, it may not happen if it does. Oh my God, it should hopefully make things a lot smoother of being able to be like, just give me a second, you know, and people go, well, okay. You know, did this job get you any additional work? No, because this is the last job I did in 2020. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I mean, really, the, the, as creators, you know, we we may poo on our own work, but you know, what if it gets you a whole bunch of other jobs? And we right. have to accept the fact that right. it is what people are looking for. Right. I think because when I look back at there's um, on my website, I have it. I have, it's the only Pepsi one I have up there right now. But there's this. Um, it's the same context of this girl like dancing and all this stuff. But the way it's lit is like I like it was exactly what I was going for, and I also didn't have the agency breathing down my neck either. And it was just a different it was a different experience. And not that this agency was breathing down my neck because they really weren't, but they were they would see things and fall in love right away. And I was kind of like, ah, let me I can make you fall in love with this, and you're going to marry right. this. Let you me know? let you fall in love all over again. Right, exactly. And I think. <laughs> The other agency, for whatever reason, just I don't know if maybe they were shooting stills at the time or, you know, people are different people. Everybody's, you know, okay, the DP's not done yet. They, and, and we did have dinner with that agency before shooting, and they were like, you know, your stuff looks great, this and that. And then while we were shooting, we were like, oh, man, this looks great. And then, like, 10 minutes later, you made it look even better. And, I'm, and they – so the, the, the understanding was there. You know, and not that the understanding wasn't there with the other group, but it was just – Okay, you know, all right, shit. All right, they saw something they really liked, and all right, I'll I'll, I'll give it to them, you know. Right. So, but right, I'm gonna throw some <laughs> questions that, that have been queuing up here. We'll let you. Sure. Uh, uh, how do you approach choosing lenses for film? Um, price is a big one. You can't always get what you want. I think that's that's just the truth. Um, I think when it comes to like when we were shooting the Jonas Brothers music video, for example, you know, I really wanted some of the character of those films. I wanted, you know, I was shooting stuff from the 80s and from the 50s, you know, in the style. We still shot modern day, we shot digital, we shot on the Venice, but I chose to shoot, you know, Hawk anamorphic. I wanted that, you know, tr- a true anamorphic landscape, just like those films would have had. Um, and I think all three, I don't even think they were all shot anamorphic. They were, I think they were all shot spherical, but I just, I wanted to make it a little bit of our own, 
but I wanted that softer texture to it. Um, I choose I choose lenses sometimes outside of price. Like I like to use the Supreme Primes a lot actually because of what Zeiss has created in their technology. I'm a big fan of older glass, but depending on the project, like if it's like that Fiat project, if you watch the video with Ava Max, it's it's huge VFX. It's a lot of visual effects in the, in the piece. A lot of painting out, a lot of, you know, you know, green screen stuff, all kinds of stuff. So anything that I can do to help a VFX team in giving them extra lens data or, you know, like what Zeiss has built into their whole data pr platform, all of that helps. So I think that's something that's really starting to push me in a direction for certain projects. Um, I, you know, it's, I think, um, I think I like to try a lot of stuff too, just to, you know, I think testing is a big thing that I try to do and I can, I would like, that's what, you know, stinks about right now. It's like, I have all kinds of time, but I can't, I can't go to my rental house and say, Hey, can I just sit in the lens room with a model and, you know, have a couple of team members with me and we just test like, right. You know, I wish I could. It'd be great. But, Allie's question <laughs> is what is your preferred all around sensor? Uh, I think right now the Sony Venice has become my preferred. Um, it's, I really like it because of the dual native ISO. It gets me out of jail a lot. There is a shot in the Ava Max video that is, there's one shot that is at 10,000 ISO. Really? Um, mm -hmm, there's one shot. Well, you got to share um, that. You can't. <laughs> it's, a close, a it's, it's a close up of, of a man's hand grabbing the door handle. In the, in the 10,000 ISO. And the reason being for that, and that was probably the third time I had shot on the camera. The first time I, it was all green screen and it was like, it was fine. You know, like it looks good. You know, and, and the stuff did look good. This was the first, that Ava Max video was the first real, like real world project I had done you know, with the Venice. And so, excuse me, um, really getting to use the, the dual native ISO for me saves a lot of time because the matte sequence we were shooting, we shot all this stuff, you know, in the, the, the main entrance of the, uh, of the place we were filming in, in this, this old castle or whatever. And then we had to shoot the sequence where the, the, the boyfriend gets in the car and drives away and starts cheating on, uh, on the girl and we're racing the sun. You know, it's gotta be like a dusk kind of time. And we got out there about an hour late. You know, just we had so much to get. And I knew I had already done the math days prior of like where I could get, you know, and, and this all started with um, Rodrigo Prieto, who's Martin Scorsese's DP, did a speaking engagement with um, Paul Feinbaum and um, Paul Cameron at Sammy's Camera. This was probably like two months before I did this video, and maybe three months. And I'll never forget Rodrigo showing side-by-side -side images of his Sony Venice test for a movie and Kodak film stock. And I was like, and granted, it's just on like a consumer grade television, but it was like, these are the same images. Like, and granted, he did he did all this treating with film grain and, and he used a process called live grain, which is um, like, a, it's a super expensive thing to do, but like, as far as trying to put a grain structure back in. So I was like, oh wow, like this, this camera can get you to that kind of place. And, but what really stuck out to me was when someone started asking him about like, what was your favorite part about the dual native ISO? He's like, Oh, well, the, you know, jumping in a 2,500 ISO gave me an extra 45 minutes of magic hour. And I was like, wait, what? And I, and I wrote that down and circled it. And I was like, what is he talking about? So then I went and tested it. Um, Joseph and I, uh, Joseph and I were talking about trying to do a movie last year. It didn't happen. And he wanted to buy a 4K camera that could shoot 4K anamorphic. And I convinced him to buy the Venice. So I started testing with the camera all the time. And I was taking it out just like around my house, just like playing with it and just looking at things. So I tested that before we did this piece. And I was like, yeah, you really, you really can still see the colors of a sunset as it's, as it's gone. Like it is gone. And it's something that I... I had already played with the Panasonic Varicam. And while I like the Varicam for a different look and a different feel, because the Varicam is native 800 and 5,000. 
the Vericam's camera already has inherent noise as if it's not fixed pattern. It's like a, like an right. organic grain. It's, feel yeah. It feels almost grain. Film yeah. Grain, yeah. Like they, and I think they did it on purpose because it's definitely, it's, it's present at 5,000. You can't get rid of it. And I, I remember feeling like there was just something different between how the Venice saw color and how the Panasonic saw color in the sense of how it handled that dual native. And the Venice was somehow more sensitive in some aspects. It was a little more sensitive in certain colors. And um, that's kind of what's pushed me towards the Venice. And plus the, the higher resolution capabilities are, are super helpful for a lot of jobs where, you know, clients like, you know, we did a couple of commercials for Google last year and they, we had to finish in 4K. Okay, we're shooting 6K with tons of VFX, no problem. Yeah. I really like that phrasing. It gives you 45 minutes extra of a magic hour because that is, yeah. I mean, it's it's a push time at that point. It it's like, if you can get extra 45, heck yes. And I think it's really important to be able to sit like, it's the thing you don't want to lose is you don't have to touch your iris if you don't have to. Because if right. you're, say, if you're, you've decided, I want the look of wide open. I want that super shallow depth of field on everything. And, or I want to look of a softer, you know, of a, a cleaner look of a T4 or something to have to ride that just to make enough light show up can totally throw you out of a scene or pull you back in, in a way you don't want the audience to. But if I can ride the light level through my ISO, it's like, ta it's like taking a more sensitive film stock out of the camera and throwing it back in. And so I think as much as people are like, there's been some conversation. I think people are like, Oh, it's just cheating. I'm like, how's it cheating? It's no different than taking, I've got a, I got a 50 ASA film stock. I've got a 200 and I've got a 500. What's the difference? You know, it's, it's just more sensitive. It's the same idea. So. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mike Sutton has a question for you. It's going to be an interesting one. You may answer it how you want. <laughs> He hasn't worked in big music videos since the 90s. What's the approximate DP rate on a higher end music video these days? <laughs> I wish there was a good answer to this because it's not good. Um, I say <laughs> it can range anywhere from 750, not kidding, to like 2,500. That's the truth. That's that's the range I've been in for certain music videos. Like I've done, I've done some videos where. The producers called me and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, he's a big artist. Like, how the, okay. You know, and that's just, they just don't, they, they don't want to spend the money. You know, like I've done, I've done jobs with Joseph, with Joseph Kahn where he's like, I'm putting my rate back into the piece because I'm only going to make where, you know, like he's only going to make like $10,000. So it was, I'd rather put the $10,000 back on screen because then it'll help me get the next big commercial or something, you know? So, All right. yeah. Okay. Uh, Ali says thoughts on spec work as a way to into or way to intro into the industry. hundred percent. I think I still do spec work, you know, even now, like I think even when you're getting in, even once you're in, once you're in the industry, you still have to, you know, look at my portfolio, for, for example, I've got a bunch of different things. I'm proud to say that look good, but if I want to go after the serious, like dark and moody car stuff, I've got one thing right now that really fits the bill. So the only way for me to really get more of that work is to do more of that work. You know, and I've, I've, I've had two projects that are now on hold because of what's happening right now that were all car related, like ready to go. Like, you know, and all you were excited because like, you yeah, had to add it to your yeah, Right. And, and that was all stuff that was going to be really, really strong. So I think a hundred percent, like I think doing spec work is, is always a good thing to do because you're, it's, you're only going to learn too. You know, you're only going to get better. You're going to get stronger. You're going to be able to, you know, I feel less pressure in a spec job, even when I want it to turn out great, because I can go, you know what? I've been using the Astera tubes for the last few months. I want to see the color fidelity of the Quasar rainbow tubes compared to an Astera. So I'm going to shoot with all rainbows. You know, I'm going to rent some or buy some or whatever, you know, something like that. Like, you know, yeah, you're less pressure. Yeah. But yeah, you try a set of lenses. You know, you maybe maybe you can do a situation where I don't like to mix sets of lenses on commercials on on a film that'd be different, but mix some lenses. And you know what? I'm you know I've been hearing about these sigmas, but I really want to shoot on this. Oh, I'll grab you don't want to try them. You know, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. You know, I'll mix them in there. A few shots here or there. You know, I think I like these better. Or no, oh, these could work for this scenario. 
So. All right, another question for you, Rob Eagle from Bright Tangerine, by the way. Uh, do you have a go-to effect filter? Go-to effect filter? Um, not really. Well, nah, that's not true. Um, I like to use black satin. Um, it's I like to use, I like to use no more than an eighth of black satin at any given moment. Um, like I know a lot of people like to use uh, black promis. I know that. Um, the DP from Stranger Things uses a, a Tim, I think it's Tim, Tim Ives. Tim I Ives, think I think it's yeah. Tim Ives. He uses an eighth black pro mist on every lens. That's just like, he adds that layer. He shoots, he was shooting Thalia's with Monstro on season three with an eighth pro mist in front of every lens. And that's just to kind of like, just add a little like ticket, you know, just another level. Um, I don't always like to use it, it just depends on what I'm shooting or who I'm shooting. So. Right. All right. Uh, Ed, Ed says, do you think the Ursa mini or the mini Ursa is a good camera for intermediate producers? I think the Ursa mini is a great camera, even at the, the highest level. I think it's, um, I think it's just the knowing how the camera works and knowing what you can do with it. But I, I like a lot of this. I've shot a bunch of things with it. That are really really good. I've done. I've used. It, I'm trying to think of what projects I have that there are shots in there. Hell, the um, there's a Google spot that I did on my website for their earbuds. You can look it up on YouTube too. It's like the Google. Uh, I have to. I have to find it. I'm gonna send it to you. But we shot that whole thing on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K because it's a body mount. It's the camera is rigged the entire time to the person's body. And I wanted something lightweight that could shoot 4k. And it's essentially the same sensor as the Ursa mini. I know there's differences, but you know, right. It worked great. Um, <laughs> so I'm just adding up here a couple of new stills to look at. Hopefully they're from the same. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how good I am. Like, uh, that one's not mine. That one's someone else's though. Let's go random again. I like that. There's a shuffle the dice. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go boom and this one. Here we go. All right, so that one, that's this is from the Ava Max Fiat collaboration. This is okay. Ava, the artist. She normally has blonde hair. This is a whole like she wanted black hair for something. But um this is uh 50 mil. I think this is a 50 mil or a 35. It's the no. It's, this is the thirty-five because I think we made a mistake, and I think I did the fifty on him, and we did the thirty-five on her for some reason. Um, yeah. Uh, Next. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding. Fair. laughs> no, 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 no. Go back. Go back. Go back. I'm just okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, no, I actually find this this image very beautiful. I love how soft everything is behind her. Mm -hmm. And she has kind of an interesting color cast that's thrown on her with lighting. Like she's got, yeah, there's a little bit of cyan mix into it um, with, uh, she's top lit. There's a top light above the table. It's a tungsten bulb, like a, um, like a 2K bulb in a, in a, in a gem ball. With a skirt around it and then i ended up adding we ended up adding blue to it you know we ended up putting like half blue on it which is kind of where you feel the blue cast that's kind of in the shadow and then we and then i it didn't dim it down because i didn't want to adjust it i just we just rolled it away you know just pulled it further back and then she's being lit with a light gear light mat with a, a soft box on it and an egg crate and um the backlight is a 10k tungsten mole beam that's like probably six feet outside that door, kind of casting the beam in and then uh, a bunch of smoke. And then just a little, you know, practical lights on dimmer, like that That little lamp in the background is just the tungsten bulb on a dimmer. And it's it's like three lights, four lights. You know, it's even the little red lamp there is, that's just being illuminated by the 10K. You know, that's not, um, that's not a bulb. There's no bulb in that. Was this one Venice? I don't remember if you said this. Yeah, that. this was Venice. This was Venice yeah. with the Zeiss Supremes. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's. Uh, this is the same, mm -hmm. same. Same. Same shoot. Similar. Similar space. He's got a. Um, we kind of edged him a little bit with. Uh, I think it was the light mat. Maybe it might have been a smaller one, just so it didn't wrap around his face so much. But she, they're basically directly under that gem ball now, and you can really feel the the blue you know, light coming on top of them. And then it's just the practicals turned on and that's it. And actually, 
he may have been being lit because I on the other side, like so the reverse shot of her sitting at the table is a shot of him sitting at the table, and behind him is another door. And I had a 5K Fresnel kind of mimicking something similar because I couldn't get two 10K mole beams. I just got one. Um, so I think that's just the that might actually be the 5K just kind of bouncing around, just adding a little because this was a pretty quick, like we just had to grab this, you know, this little sequence. So yeah. interesting. Okay, this one. This one I find really soft but also moody it's it's, it's yeah. interesting. so this is um this is just the natural daylight coming through the windows to her left your right and then it's two 12 by solids right out of frame just kind of wrapping around her just to bring them because we're in a i think there's a shot where you can see the full size of the room it's a, it's a fairly yeah, like, big room nice. yeah there's a fairly big room but this was something that was, it had to be quick. You know, we didn't have a lot of time. Um, so we just, we played with what was there. Yeah. And that's the room. Yeah. And that's just the natural daylight. There are, really? there are there, yeah, there are two windows, the same size as that door that is closed that are just open. And actually I might've even closed one of them just so the light just hit her. And, you know, with, in post putting power, you know, we, we vignetted it and we had to probably put a little power window to, to grade eight things down a little bit. So, and then that's a, it's just a little practical lamp in there just to add a little color contrast, you know? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> beautiful as well. Let's Get it. God. Let's see here. And drink more water. Yes. Drink more water. If you need to take yeah, let me grab, s- let me grab, I got a water thing back there. Yeah. Let me grab that real quick. I'll put me on full so that everyone doesn't see you grabbing water. Cause I mean, that's embarrassing when you do that. <laughs> okay. Let's, I'm going to open up a couple more here images. Um, yeah, this is, I'll be better prepared. I, I, I kept telling everybody I wanted Weldon's to be really good because he's such a wealth of knowledge and he shot some beautiful stuff. Um, and I wanted it, I, I wanted to be more prepared for it, but gosh, he's just, he's spilling it all here. So we might as well <laughs> dig on in and uh, let's see. Hey, we can, more. we can do more later when I get my better microphone fixed and you know, I could put up a nice camera and I could send you the files and all that stuff. And if, if me, they're just I got, named, I, I got time, man. I got time. You, if they're, uh, if they're named, oops, wrong way. Yeah, if the right. files are named, we'll be in a better position. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that too. Yeah, these are these are just like exports out of. I was, uh, you know, I've been working on website stuff and whatnot. Um, right. Yeah, this is this is one light. Um, it's it's kind of see it, I think. Is it coming bouncing uh-huh. off the? It's it's hitting her directly, but it's it's probably tilted enough to where some of the lights hitting the ground, and you're seeing that little hot spot there. It's just it's a five k, um, or is it a 5k there? Yeah, it was a 5k. It was a 5k Fresnel just on a stand. You know, without, <laughs> there's a there's a four by floppy bottomer. And it's funny is if you look towards the top of the frame, and I'm really seeing yellow. Now, see the yellow and the oh, very you can see top. the floppy. You can see the floppy. You can see the fill. <laughs> you can see the shadow of it. That's awesome. Yeah, not that's so the great. stuff not I love. So great, because not so great now. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, it's the stuff that I love because I will panic. I will yeah. absolutely panic if that's showing up in mine. And you know, this this is okay. It made it. People didn't yeah. care. Right. And that's like you, you do. Know, I do now because I'm like, oh man. The the only <laughs> thing that, there's the I don't know if you have the shots next, but like there's a shot next where she's now walking toward well, it's out of that sequence. Okay. It's in that sequence, but she's walking towards camera and I had to turn the light off because I can find it. it just couldn't we couldn't move fast enough because the 5k was too strong and I needed a taller stand. And it's just, and it's, that's one of those moments of I'm in Italy. I do not speak Italian. The Italian crew is amazing, but English is not their first language. I'm working with a director that moves extremely fast. And so things get lost in that translation of, Hey, let's make sure it's this make sure it's that. And that's only something I don't look at that as like, well, that's just the way things are. I always go back to, you know, look later on of like, well, what could I have done differently? What could I have said? I could have been prepared a little better. I could have thought about, okay, I need to know what size stands you have, what height they are, and think about the shots. You know, and granted, sometimes, and that was, this is 100% a situation of, you know, we just, we didn't know exactly what we were going <laughs> to, I won't catch the road, don't worry, Tim. Uh, I've had a cough for like a month. 
but um but yeah you just you're always trying to find ways to to just make things better when you can so so tell yeah. me about this shot because this is this is a shot that i thought was like it was really cool it felt it felt old mm -hmm. it felt you know you got yeah. the old tv in there to really kind of pitch it but i mean yeah. it really feels old what yeah it's still this is just a continuation of the idea is that the boyfriend is seeing Ava Max on he's seeing someone on TV that looks, you know, like what is going on? It kind of looks like my girlfriend. And, you know, because of the sequence of the video, she turns into this like superhero and he turns into a bad guy and she kicks his ass. And the idea is that maybe, you know, she's going out in the middle of the night and fighting crime. And so <clears throat> it really it's it's taking I honestly we took a lot of the same stuff we'd already used in that little table sequence but just kind of crunched it down a little more to make it feel a little different. This is literally on the other side of the room. Yeah, because that's the back. doors. Right, that's the doors, that's the lamp. It's some of the same stuff. This time you, I turned on the lamp. Yeah, I put that other lamp, the little red lamp. Well, you, you pulled the couch out from that previous scene, right? Right, you pulled the couch out. Yeah, and, and you didn't. You couldn't see the TV. We framed it out. And it's the, um, you know, there's a hallway down there that, the doorway is just open to add a little depth. That hallway is probably 60 feet long and there's big windows and we just closed them all because it was just too much. That and the right. crew, crew was working inside of there too. Well, and you're blasting like a, a large tungsten it looks like. Uh, I, I think it was still that same 10K, but I just, at this time, I'm, I've am i most likely shaped it down or added some like yeah. a double net, you know, or like a double scrim or a single scrim or maybe a couple of them just to, just to make it different. You know, and, to, and put a little, taken a, a four by floppy underneath, a, you know, a bottomer, and then shoved it up to kind of, you know, change the, you know, the cone of the light is instead of it being like this, it's now like this, you know, just by shaping it in differently. So, and then mm -hmm. the top top light is that same uh, gem ball that was before, and just rolling it over, and then um, it's a little less blue. I probably increased the output of the light just to make it feel a little different because it's a little more neutral. You know, so but that's that's it. That's all that's in them. Yeah. Interesting. Let me see where okay, we did that one. Uh, we did that one. Okay. I'm just trying to see where uh, I don't have the one uh I obviously didn't save it, the one where she was walking towards camera. Oh, uh, not a big deal. It just I think the walking towards camera thing is just for me it was I it's funny because I tend I see a huge difference in where I tend to go now you know, 10 years from when I used to do broadcast stuff, like I always put like crazy hard backlights in interviews and stuff like that all the time. And I don't use backlight anymore. Like, <laughs> like when I say I use backlight, like when I mentioned it earlier, it's like the scene has backlight in the sense of like, you want to show depth by creating backlight with a building has lights on it. Or like even that scene of him sitting in the couch, like there's light coming from the background and that creates a separation, you know, versus, I didn't put like some sort of edge on him on his hair to separate him. And I could have in reality, I probably would have tried to put a little light if I had just a touch more time, just on that little bookcase that had the two little practical lamps just to create some separation behind his black hair and the black area. Yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah. cause he kind of falls into it a little bit. It still looks nice, but I don't, I don't like unmotivated hard backlight or color in, unless it's like a super artistic, piece that's just like you're doing whatever just because it's cool you know so, so this one here this is part of your pepsi commercial and this one is yeah. almost a polar opposite of the others because it's kind of yeah it's it's, it's not it, it it's softer but it's also very evenly lit it, mm -hmm. it, i mean obviously to feel like an office this is clearly a set right <laughs> yeah it's a four it's a three wall set uh we were shooting on a stage and um it's uh, so the other Pepsi job with the vanilla Pepsi, this is our cherry Pepsi. So we did both commercial spots, both 30 second spots on a, a, a two day shooting schedule. Uh, and they're both two standalone spots. So for this one, you know, the idea is the guy's like dancing. He's like, look at me, you know, and he's listening to uh, sexy. And I know it as the song. And then he wakes up, he like spins around and he's got his hands on the, the copier. And he's like, Oh, okay. Uh, oh, well, whatever. You know, Pepsi. Pepsi makes my life better. Now, that's the concept. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's top lit with those two Colt LEDs, this time through an 8x8 uh, grid. And the reason why I'm using those Colt LED space lights because I have control to bring them up and down. It's, again, about the spread. 
you know, I don't lose, if I was using tungsten space light, just, you know, I'm, I'm going to dim them down, but I'm now going to introduce a color change because the color is going to become warmer. Whereas the coal LEDs, those are day, I've, they're bicolor there. I switched them to 6,000 Kelvin and, you know, they're probably at a hundred percent actually, because I don't, I think I, for this, it was double diffused with full grid an LCD, a skirt, and then the skirts, a, a, a skirt around the eight by eight, and then it skirts around the, the two lights. Um, and it's just, you know, that's what's kissing on the walls and it's lighting the people. And then on him, our main hero, our guy holding the can there, I've got a, um, the Roscoe DMG Luminaire. Um, I think it was, I don't know if it's the mini mix. I think it was the SL2. Is it's this two foot one as his kind of coming over the wall as his like key light and then down behind the the back of the uh the printer there is a battery powered one of the cute lion quasar tubes. oh Probably. yeah a little <laughs> yeah just like a couple taps throw that just in just to keep it from being dark back there yeah because it was really just dark it was just what's back there it's dark you know and, and, and you hit it with the wastebasket nice yeah hit it with the wastebasket yeah and um <laughs> and then outside of camera on the right side of frame is i i've got a sky panel s60 bouncing into a 12 by 12 ultra bounce just to give a little bit of fill like just it's probably like 20 percent. like it's really low and that's one of those like as you're looking at the image you're just kind of like okay i want to dial in a little more a little less just to you know kind of make some things you make the chair, you know, that's giving me a little, a little accent on the chair. It's going to be just helping people stand out a little bit. And then just the practicals. Hey, what's up, Austin Lewis? What's up, buddy? <laughs> so Austin, Austin here is, Austin's my, my main focus puller. He lives in Atlanta. But oh, he, yeah. He goes back and forth to LA quite a bit. But, um, and fun fact, yeah. that is actually the <laughs> shortest amount of words he's ever used. <laughs> that's probably true. That's probably true. That's a good thing, though. He's, he's a good yeah. communicator. He, he loves to talk, and he's got a lot of knowledge, so I, I don't mind yeah. it. <laughs> totally does. Yeah. He, um, he, did, he did not do – sadly, he has not done any of the projects other than the Google ones that I've been talking about because he I, he was out in L.A. for these um, at the time. He was already on a job, and then I haven't been able to travel him internationally, which has been kind of a bummer. Right. But that'll change. You know, bigger jobs will come. So. Um, uh, and so for this, and then for this shot, it's really um, that same. It's the same top light, the same SL two. We have extended the wall and moved things yeah, around. Okay, that's because they either rearranged or you extended. Yeah, and then you um, see the extension. Yeah, and then we, uh, you know, I've got a bunch of ballast cards. I can I can run if you want. <laughs> 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 and I've got some bounce cards just adding a little passive fill. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the wide shot, but you can see it here is the the light of the printer so the actual right. like you know a copier light so and so we got the production designer was like he's a really great guy i love this guy to death he was so excited that he was like dave i've got i've got this working printer like it <laughs> works and um this guy's name is vance vance is probably in his early 70s and he's he's worked with david fincher he's worked with george lucas he's worked with, he's done so many things his first pride his first movie was american graffiti the man is a wealth of knowledge. He's a wonderful human being. And I just, I love his enthusiasm. And, you know, like with anybody, you know, some people have their different opinion on things. And so he says to me at one point, he goes, um, he goes, I want to show you this printer. He's like, it's got a cool color to it, Dave. Like, you're going to love it. And so he fires <laughs> up the printer, hits the other copy, and then this purple light goes across. And I'm like, oh, man, uh... purple light. Like, and I'm like... <laughs> They're not gonna go for this purple white man, like, and I and he was like, "Doesn't it look cool?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but not for this." It's not <laughs> so, <real>. right. <laughs> I'm like, "It's oh, it's it, it's purple, you know, and it's it's because it's an old school copier." And um, so he, so I was like, "All right, I don't want to burst your bubble," but I, so I, I went ahead and I was like, "Look, we're gonna have to rig something in here to make it move." So what we ended up doing was we were able to remove the glass and take it out, and so you've got the strip that and we, we did put it back in so you've got the stripper that purple light is and then we found a way we took a piece of of light gear light ribbon that you you can cut to whatever size you want you can oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, had, we already had a little piece we ran it taped it onto it ran the wires through it and then the you know, put the control box on the ground and hit it and then art department took some fishing line 
on each side, tied it to the oh, no. little <laughs> thing, little thing, and then ran the cord around the door. And it was thin enough to where you can easily paint it out in post. And they did the action. <laughs> That's awesome. And we it's the funniest part about it was so on this shot here, we actually broke the light ribbon, the first one, the super bright one. And then it took about 15 minutes because everybody was freaking out trying to get the exact like find another one. And one of the electricians is he's you know, Gary's in there soldering the the broken one. And I'm like running out of the truck and I'm like, I've got guys wrapping out the other set, and I'm like, you know, grabbing my gaffer, his name's Shane as well. And I'm like, Shane, I'm like, where's Gary? Did I'm like what? I was like, do we have anything? He's like, yeah, I got another one, but it's half as bright. I'm like, that's fine. I was like, I just need it for the final shot. And so we put it in there, we turn 100%, and I'm like, this thing, I'm like, I actually need to dim it down. It's too bright because I'm I'm looking at it on my monitor and using false color, and I knew where it was. You know, my DIT is in my ear talking to my headset, and she's like, you got to come down. It's too bright. And she's like, yeah, you want to be at 80 ER, 80 IRE or 90 or whatever it was. And we got it to match, but it was like, oh, my God, like, People were panicking about it, but it was cool. Like it worked out really well. So. Fun, fun little story there. That on fishing line, I'm a big fan of using fishing line on everything. Oh, I did a, a a film riot contest like five years ago. Oh, nice. One of my little amateur things, and I had this Snickers bar on the table that was to levitate because the aliens had uh. to steal my Snickers, and so I did fishing line on it. And I had it going up to two little fish eyes or uh, <laughs> eye hooks in the ceiling. And my mom, she was visiting, and I had her back in the hallway <laughs> pulling it up. And everybody kept saying, "Oh, nice VFX there," because the the thing just kind of just went up so nicely. It's on like, oh, its way up. It's fishing line. <laughs> That's what's so funny about even something as thin as fishing line. Like I don't like I can't tell because I don't have a super high quality uncompressed version of this commercial. But I'm like. I don't know if they painted it out. They might have, like, because if you use small enough fishing line, you don't even yeah, have to. You don't have to sometimes. It's so thin. Yeah, it works perfect. Pretty funny. Um, and here's a close up of the Pepsi can. Yep. That's so you've got very so nicely the, lit from yeah, the so side. It's from the side, and and um, you know, so it's still kind of he's in the space a little bit. You know, he's still getting kissed with that top light a little. There's a ton of bounce cars all around. Um, the key with this isn't my my favorite can that I've lit, um, but it works and it's fine. It's the hard is pretty. I mean, it's pretty. Um, the one thing to remember is like you're, you can see where the the edge of the the light is, and this is something for I think I wish I had spent more time practicing, you know, because it took me a lot longer to to get to it just by doing it. Um, but you can obviously practice at home, and I think one thing is really study where how light reflects off of curved surfaces, like. Obviously, right. that, that just looking at it, you're thinking, okay, that light is right there, just outside the camera, and it's bouncing back. The light is be is behind the can. It is almost touching his left arm because oh, of wow. where, where you have but to place it to get that that reflection. Um, you know, the map box is – the one thing, too, is always you can kind of see, you know, where the reflection ends and begins inside of the can where it says Pepsi and Wild Cherry. You know, we've got, I've got bounce cards above and below the map box. And it's like, imagine like a giant white map box. And then I've taken white tape and I've put it in the map box, you know, because if you didn't want to see a black, you to, right. You don't want to see just like a black, it's just, it's just dark. And granted, you can also use it to your advantage if you're like, okay, if I pull that piece of white tape, that'll, you know, I won't see the reflection there, you know, and maybe that's what you want. In this particular situation, they wanted to feel like they're like, can we make that just that little section brighter? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And they're like, oh yeah, that's exactly what we want. I'm like, perfect, great. Like, not hard, you know, so. Uh, let's see this, this one. So this is the same commercial, I'm assuming. Right, probably, I didn't know what you're going to. Yep, same commercial. And so what is this? <laughs> What do you got under there? Just tubes? <laughs> there's sky panels. So this was, oh. there's four, one, two, there's three S60s and two S30s. So this was a scenario where I think I sent you the round, we'll get to the round one there, where he's standing in like a circular of light. Um, <clears throat> if you pull that one up real quick. <clears throat> this, uh, let me find it. if you've got, well, this shot, this particular runway look, wasn't necessarily what the director wanted. This was a, we've got it just in case kind of thing. And it was, you know, I kept being told by everybody, the producer, production designer, everybody, this was like, no, it's fine. You know, we're not gonna like it. 
you know, that's not the one you're looking about. Yeah, that's not the one I'm looking at. Yeah, it's, it's, this is still him on the runway, but um, which is fine. Um, well, then all of a sudden, the agency didn't like the concept of these round circular lights because the idea was he was going to be on a lazy Susan, like, <laughs> spinning, you know, and doing this and lights around him doing stuff. And the agency was like, we don't get it. We don't understand. He's. You know, he, we would we and they were like we would think that the lighting gag would mirror that that's the shot yes that's yeah. this is in the director's cut i pulled this off his facebook i need to actually get the video from this is a whole a whole nother rig and so it's all you know light the lights below don't move but they can change colors and stuff but the lights above are all they can the blue lights can move and there's a spotlight you know big rock and roll lights and this is 16 plus 5, 20. This is 21 lights hitting him right now. That's 21 different lights, um, which wow. is expensive. Um, I'll get to that in a second. But if we go back to the runway, um, they decided they wanted something to mimic the copier light. That's what they really wanted. And we were, like, kind of prepared for that. You know, we weren't. So the biggest hurdle with that, and you can clearly see, you know, below his feet, you can see the source. You can see the right. sky panel. And the reason why you're seeing the sky panel is because these grates, these four, they're four, four by eight grates that would go on a drain or something. <clears throat> or or these would be on like a at like a Costco warehouse. The Prex Desire had just had them and he brought them as like a backup. And he only had two foot steel pipe to raise them up so i had like two and a half feet of clearance to put lights underneath where i needed i realistically i needed like four feet i needed a platform and all this stuff so that you could pull him further away and you wouldn't see the source and you could feel the movement of the light because the problem became the light would move but it just it didn't really do what we wanted to do and it was like oh my god just this is we, we spent a three days of talking about and then a day of a building that circular light and then this was like at the end of the pre-light the last like three hours they're like well they want to do this now too and it's like what we didn't so i'm literally i have all these other sky panels for other things and i'm like pull those out let's get more cable and we're like renting more cable so we could pre-run things because we have a dinner board up and all this stuff and then um he's just being there's and then behind him and this is where i mentioned to you scott before of like this is the kind of thing where i like to review things and think about well, what i've done differently right is behind him I have a, um, a 5K Fresnel light with the Fresnel removed. So it's a tungsten light. And I've got double full CTB on the lamp burning. The light is just burning through the gel. And you can really, you can, yeah, that's it. You can start to see it. <clears throat> and it was really just because we wanted to put something in the background just to make it interesting. And we'd already done the vanilla version where we wanted some sort of blue behind it. And that was a 10 K with the same setup, but it was, you know, pushing up and we had space to put it down low and all that stuff. I was thinking about this the last couple of nights, cause I've been thinking of, you know, I hadn't really thought about it for about a month. And then last night I was thinking about it and the night before. And I really think what in hindsight, what I would have done is I probably would have for this spot and maybe for the other one, I would have had four or five of the digital Sputnik, DS6s, the, you know, they're nine light because you can change the color, you can dim them, you can have them affect. I could have had them all popping, you know, thinking just doing this kind of dance in the background, you know, and I thought like, oh, that would have been cool. You know, and I also try to think of stuff too that my gaffer, you know, I'm trying to think of like, well, what stuff does he have so I don't have to subrent things so I can stay within the budget and so I don't, I don't want to cut into his profit margin either, you know, because I, you know, I, like I said before, I'm early in my career to where I want to get to. And I think the more that I can play in a space that helps the crew make their money, helps them get their rentals on the job, puts more money in their pocket, the more inclined that those people will become when I need, I need the help. I, we're going to do, I'm doing my first movie. I need, I really need you to bring $40,000 worth of rentals for six thousand dollars a week can you do that right. yeah so i feel like if i do, if i pay it on the front end i'll get yeah, it on pay, the back end pay, pay forward, forward. Yeah. you know and um 
and that's what's funny is like I've, I try to do that every single job, and I've been now and already like guys are like, hey, I'll bring it. I'm like, no, I'll just save it for the bigger job, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, but it's very cool to have people that that really. Uh, All right, I'm a, I'm gonna throw out there because I usually go about two hours. I don't know how much time sure. you have. I'm definitely. I mean, I'll go. I'll go as long as people have questions. But it, you know, your time I, is, is I got as well. I got nothing. You've got going on. so many jobs booked right now. Don't <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got nothing going on, man. I'm good. So I want to throw out there to people to start putting your questions in. And uh, get them in there. I'll start lining them up and, and get them going. Was there anything, David, of the images that you sent that you wanted to show? I know there was one. So I can find it. Um, trying to think. We could talk about that, the one of the up lights and all that kind of stuff and that whole yeah, yeah. scenario. Me, uh, pull that one up here. There you go. Um. So this one was a challenge because of cost. Um, originally, the director wanted to do a wall of light, but he wanted to be able to program it so that the lights would go and do things all in unison and together. And you know, essentially, you know, imagine rock and roll lights that you would, you know, see at a at a a concert venue, concert, yeah. yeah, concert venue, something like that. So those are very expensive. Um, there are many different types of lights that you can get that do a lot of the same things. Um, they get expensive because you start getting into a dimmer board, your programmer, yeah, the programming of the DMX, yeah, right. You you cannot you cannot just set this up in a day and shoot in the same day if you have no. You, you got to choreograph it. It's yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, that's my so, former job as a DJ. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, it's a lot of work, you know, and um, so we had a lot of back and forth and trying to figure this out. And then this is a, ultimately what they ended up coming down to of like what they all agreed, like, yeah, we like this idea. And so for me, in that, in the vanilla Pepsi spot, there are these, um, <laughs> Ross says, keep going. No problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> hold on. Sorry. What's that? No, I was thinking hi. I'll mute him. It's it's only fair that we mute him during this. He's, he's a lot of private time. You can make food. <laughs> he's gonna come say hi in a second. Come on, oh. in. say hi to Scott. Come in, hey Chris <laughs> and Rob Eagle and Tim Dost. Hey Chris, I miss you guys. <laughs> uh, as my my office is now in the kitchen because we separated our workspaces. So, but now it'll be fine. Um, <clears throat> so she's gonna make food. I need to put like a backdrop up or something like with a sponsor. Right. Rob, Rob Eagle, you want to sponsor my backdrop? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but um, so anyways, so for this thing, it was trying to find um, a way to do it cost effectively. And obviously, you know, when I start saying things that cost effectively, it's within the context of like, you know, for some people, you know, where I think of where I was 10 years ago where I'm like, oh, my God, like no matter what this cost is way more than what I'm doing right now. It's like, yeah, but you're not going to be doing that forever. You know, if you're going to be eventually getting that that space. So, you know, don't think of it in that that has said that, that headspace if you are, because um, I certainly used to as well. But, um, you know, it was my original quote was. 65 lights, of mo all moving lights, all, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo, all that stuff was like fifty five or sixty thousand dollars just for one day, not even like we needed them for two days. And the total budget for the all the lighting I think all together was originally like twenty thousand. Oh, where'd you get that from? <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that's Chris. Yeah, yeah, no, because she was in there. I figured I'd, I'd pull that one up. Yeah, that was uh, the Vista one shoot that we did with Chris. How'd you There's guys Tim Doust. You're at Mole Richardson. Yeah. She can't, DP, she can't and that's Jared Land's um, uh, his ranger right there. Oh, nice! That she's was his. It. Nah, she's she's oh, she's okay. Fine. She's, 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 she's go ahead. <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> so for what did I have the virus? No, they put up. They put up. I said you're embarrassed. Sure. They put up the photo. They put up this photo of you. Send that to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said, okay. I thought you had it. No, I, I said that to you while we were shooting. Oh, and I was saying, like, I was like, yeah, we're making her work today. Oh, he said he said it to me while you guys were shooting. Oh, send it to I, me I, and I'll post it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, 
so for this for this setup so originally like the quote was insane and i think the total budget and uh was like probably like 17 or sixteen thousand dollars for everything for a two-day shoot for for all the lighting and so it was oh my god so i knew that i needed for day one i needed eight up lights for the ribbons in the vanilla commercial where there's these she's dancing with the ribbon which is supposed to be the receipt and then there's ribbons floating around her we wanted to put light on those so i put lights below well then this is 16 lights underneath this lazy susan so it's it's a round spaceship where we put the lights in we cut these holes they're like three inches in diameter and then the lazy susan is dropped in like i think it was heavy the funniest part about it was he didn't even turn on it we 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 dollied around him and so we didn't oh. even turn the lazy susan on which is funny um but i was really concerned about the sharpness of the beams um i I, I wrote them down. If, if you're a part of the Hurlbut Academy, I did a little article inside of the uh, the Facebook group that does dive into this, and it says which actual fixtures they were. I just don't remember off the top of my head. But they were essentially non-movable. The red lights are non-movable, um, uh, you know, DJ lights that are you know high, they're high LED park hands or what? Yeah, like kind of LED park hands, pretty much. And they have a you have a little bit of spot control, but not a lot. It's just kind of what right. you get is what you see, what you get. And there's also like you've got like a blue, a red, a green. A, you don't get oh, like wow, you don't okay. get to go like Ooh, I'm gonna dial in this particular color. So it's kind of like I hope this works, you know. And I was super worried about that the whole time, you know. The, they use those uh, at wedding venues for uplighting along the drapes yeah. or the curtains. Exactly. Yeah. Essentially, that's what they were. You know, and, and you know, we were renting from a from Illumination Dynamics, which is a big company that rents all kinds of stuff like this for all kinds of. I'm sure they they rent to wedding people that do huge weddings and stuff like right. that too. So it's just these lights are not just for film and stuff like that, but the the lights above were five moving lights you know they're movers they can choo -choo, pan let you know tilt and all that kind of stuff and they have flood and spot control and all that stuff and you can put same situation you don't have full control with mover lights of any kind to just they're not rgb they're hmi so they have gels that go right, right. in front of the, the, the gobos HMI. in front of yeah. yeah so this is just a blue gobo that's already built in you can just do, do, blue, blue red yellow yep. green whatever you want so you're at the mercy of, of hopefully the colors are super accurate. And you also, granted, you're going to look at what all the specs are and what you can get and all that kind of stuff based on CRI level and all those kind of things. Um, so, and we had like different patterns that we did where it was like the lights swooped in and, you know, we had them like go from blue to white and all that kind of stuff. And then he's got one, one of the lights is just right on him and it's white, just the naked HMI. And then, it's dimmed down even to where I don't, it's, it's an HMI, but it's dimmed down in the sense of like it, you're putting a frost in front of the lamp at the end of it to, to spread it out, you know, because it granted, this is Facebook compression of how I got the screen. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to see, but like the first time we did it, it was like super blown out. I was like, that's just, a, it's, it's, we got to take it down just a little bit, you know? So, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of, of that one. Uh, I think Rob Eagle was answering. Oh, wait. Well, he, <laughs> he was said, answering yes that he would sponsor you for your backdrop. <laughs> right. Tangerine backdrop right here. I want it black with white right. lettering with orange. That's what I want. I don't want a And white. he wants DJ lights all around it with yeah, up yeah. lights. <laughs> I want like, no, orange it, light to rotate around me and stuff. Yeah. If anybody's looking for those type of lights, you can actually buy really cheap LED up lights on Amazon. Yeah. I. I mm -hmm. bought like a 10 pack of them for like 300 bucks. You'd be surprised uh, at how good are, a lot of those are too. Yeah. Really and surprised. those are DMX. So you have to buy a DMX control board, which now you can get a cheap Chinese one for, mm -hmm. for yeah. pennies. Uh, we got a question here from Austin. He says, what other uses are you finding for the DS6? Also, have you what have you been doing to prepare for the unforeseen moments of inspiration? Nice, good question. Oh, good one. What other uses are you finding for the DS6? Um... I wish I, I wish I thought about this earlier because I could have pulled some frame graphs. Because I've used the DS sixes in like three instances. You, Austin was there for one at least. I don't know if he was. I can't remember if you did the DJ Khaled video. 
not I know you did the just us in Miami, but I don't know if you did the one in LA with us. Can't remember. But so I they're great for throwing light like all over the place. So we did this. I have a love-hate relationship with digital Sputniks light quality. Um they got very popular because of Greg Frazier, because he got them a $2 million contract for Star Wars Rogue One, because he lit most of that movie with digital Sputnik lights. I understand why he did it, because it's a big punch, super versatile. And if you're using them without color, they're very accurate. The problem with their lights when you start diving into color is, and I believe this is part, okay, you did do the, both of those videos. So, those, so you might remember us. Um, but these lights are just like oversaturated, pushing certain colors to make the colors, you know, to actually make a color. So when, like, especially red, like I don't believe there's an actual red chip in a digital Sputnik light because it's really hard to get an accurate red out of them. They almost come, they almost become pink. We did this, we did a, v, a video for BB Rexa, um, which is a big pop artist. And we did it last like January of 2019. And Austin was on that. And we we needed to do a shot. Hi. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> he says, hey, what's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're doing the same thing where they can't hear us when we can hear each other. Right, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're yeah. <laughs> so we um we needed to do a shot where we were gonna have uh like the building just turn red. And it was just like like the exterior of the building just needed a wash of red. And you know, you, do? you could do it with sky panels depending on the size of the building because a sky panel can go pop, turn on. Um, I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have a lot of experience with the RGB Kino Plus stuff and some of the other things on the market, so it's hard to say. But the hard part is trying to get something that just goes instant on. Can't do it with HMI because HMIs have to warm up and turn on. Tungsten could work. Um, but we were just trying to think of what can we have that's quick and easy. We can roll out a couple things and we can change the color fast. Because that's always the thing. You don't want to have to get to a situation where you're like, okay, we've got our we've got a bunch of nine lights out and we're going to put the gel in front. And then all of a sudden it's like, eh, that color doesn't look right. Or the director goes, oh, I, I want it to be green now. And you're like, <laughs> hold on, i got to cut gel. When if you've got something that's just DMX or whatever, you just do -do -do -do, boom, you can change it. So those things throw a lot, but they're not super accurate in certain colors. So like, if you look at that video, it's, um, I forget the name of it, it's on my website. Um, there's a shot in there where it just goes to like, you light up the, sh and it's a quick shot. So, but if you really study it, you're like, oh, the center of that looks almost pink. Um, I think that they're, I think that digital Sputnik lights are really great for a lot of accents. I don't know if I'd use them for a key light and stuff like that. Um, I was just thinking about this the other day of trying to use them practically, like the Pepsi thing I had mentioned of being able to use them in the background of the shot, like actually using the fixture because you can you can have them do more than one thing. It's not just an all on or an all off. And you don't have to have somebody standing there like da -da -da, flipping the, the bulbs on and off. Like you can actually use it in frame and you have somebody, you know, could create a pattern and, and a chase. And you can do it manually if you wanted to, just have, you know, a bunch of people doing up stuff or whatever if you put it into a board. Um, but I feel like they're the kind of thing where I've been trying to think about how to use them more often for big, big throws of light where you're like, I want to accent these people in the background, but I don't want to have like a big Fresnel to do it. But I need like, I need essentially like what a Lico or a Joe Lico, which is a, uh, an HMI um, Joker bug with a Lico attachment to it, just throwing, but I want to be able to have control over it. I don't want to be able, I don't want to be a situation where I'm like, that's oh, too bright. You know, and it's like, ah, get something else out there. It's like, well, I can still have something close to like a 200 or 400 watt, you know, par light that can just throw and then I can change the color too. You know, so that's, that's where I like to see it. Um, and what do you, what are you doing to prepare for unforeseen <laughs> moments of inspiration? Which that, that's a, that's a fun one actually. Um, unforeseen moments of inspiration. I feel like, and Austin knows this well. <laughs> he's, I know, I know Austin's going. I know exactly. He's laughing right now because I know he's thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Sometimes I feel like I prepare less for inspiration. Well, maybe it's not my inspiration. Maybe it's somebody else's inspiration. Let's put it that way. So maybe if your director or the client 
or someone else gets inspired by something. I think it's having, if you can, it's trying to have a plethora of, of tools available. You want to have options. That was the best advice that was ever given by Daniel Pearl. Daniel Pearl and I had a chance to talk before I did my first project with Joseph Kahn, and I specifically reached out to Daniel because he and Joseph have worked together many times. And Daniel's kind of getting to that part of his career where he was like, ah, I'm starting to retire, and you know, I don't want to do it. And him and Joseph have still worked together. But the first thing he said to me was he's like, have a truck full of options. You know, if you have 118K, make sure you have two. You know, if you have – you know, one sky panel, have five, you know, it's like, have this version, have that, have this. And I was like, God, you're so right. And so I always try to do that, which is, is very difficult to do um, because that you're, you can do that in your own backyard, no matter where you are, because that having that ability is built on relationships. You know, like I know I can, I know I can say to Austin, like, Hey, we're doing, um, we're doing this video and I really need you to bring your C motion you know, for, for Iris, but I don't have the budget to rent it. But can you help me out on this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know he'll do it. And I know he knows that I'm not going to abuse that. But if I go to Italy, I don't have that flexibility with anyone there, you know, depending on what the budget of the project is. So you're, I think having as much knowledge as you can of what you can do with certain things and then, you know, trying to focus on the idea that sometimes less is more, you know, of, you know, you can do things really simply that just make an amazing effect, you know, by accident, you know, in a sense, you know, so I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Here's a question from Raphael. Do you like, or have you used still cinema lenses for your projects? Um, I haven't used them in a long time. I would say, I feel like most of the lenses now that come from that cinema world are either now in a space where you can get, the proper housings for them. I don't necessarily like to use them unless it's like if I'm doing like a spec project or a doc, you know, if I'm doing a doc project, I might rent them because it'd be cheaper. Um, and I'm most likely going to pull my own focus if I'm doing a documentary. And so I don't have to, I'm not looking at the barrel and I'm trying to judge six feet and it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I think for a big commercial or a music video that has a bigger budget, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use a still modded lens because there's no witness marks of telling you where the focus actually is. You're, you're, you're really just shooting, you're guessing you're shooting in the dark, you know, but they're not bad. I'll, like they, they're sort of look great, you know, but depending on the type of project you're doing, you know, for where I'm at now, it's, I can't afford that risk of putting my focus pullers in a space where they're not going to be comfortable. And for those of you who are, joined us on the live stream either or both on youtube or facebook put your questions down in the comments below i'll try to get put to them questions oh. in yeah, yeah. Questions. david is really ready to go i mean he's he's got fresh water it looks like you ate up all I your did. what is that the planners uh oh it's planners balls. it's planners peanuts in front of uh in front of a the big the peanut butter pretzels ah <laughs> uh, the secret okay <laughs> I, I like, la those lasted about a week <laughs> Yeah, those, yeah. Those, those, those would go fast. Yeah, they go really quick. <laughs> what um, what photos did I – oh, actually, here's one. Here's one I wanted to go to. Let me yeah. open with. I could probably quickly uh, send you some more, too, while we're oh, sitting here. Yeah? I think I could. Because I might have – let me pull You can send them in order, and then we can talk <laughs> about them. <laughs> That's true. While you're pulling up stuff, I can, um, right, I can so keep talking. This one right here. This one I, I just love because I find it really hard to to get dark and and get that that like the kiss of light. I mean, you mm -hmm. obviously have it just completely shaped beyond a, to just a strip there. But yeah, tell me what you got going on there. So for this one, um, you know, the background that we're in a parking garage. There was a shot earlier that where you can see the car coming down with people walking. We're literally in that parking garage shooting. And um, the uh, the guy's in the car. He's sitting in the in the front seat. One second, just text me. Um, just make sure it wasn't important. <laughs> Off chance, <laughs> there might be a job. You know, um, the background is is uh, pre-existing tubes. You can see that a little bit of yellow. Like we opened up the back of the of the car. 
so that you could see it. Otherwise, the tint of the window was so right. Yeah, but the natural bulb, like, yeah, the natural indie was just crazy. So the bulbs are already like super low to begin with, and they're wrapped with um, like a uh, like a chrome amber like orange gel. And I know it wasn't CTS or CTO. It was like a chrome orange. I think it was chrome orange. And um, then he's literally lit. There's there's definitely a little bit of some uh, some sky panel just ambience bouncing into most likely like a four by bounce just kind of towards the, the car. Or it's probably like an S30, like a little one. Just give me like a little bit of blue hint. And he is lit from the side, like a like hundred, like if I'm the camera, the camera's looking at me, or if I'm him, the light is like over here, 10 feet away. And it's a le it's just a Leco. And it's just the barn doors are squeezed as tight as they can go. And then we just tried to put it right off of his eyes so it didn't blind him. Um, but again, it was kind of, it's almost like that, it's, it's a part of that reflection and shape conversation with the can. You know, it's like, you would think that like, oh, well, if I go straight on, I'll get that effect. But if you go straight on, it's a totally different effect, you know? And, and, and that was something we literally just like, we kept moving it until we found what we wanted. You know, it was like, oh, we start here, start there. Oh, ooh, that looks cool, you know? So, Interesting. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Cody says, hey, David, when you're on set, hey, Cody, uh, do you make custom LUT depending on your project or you typically use a Rec. 709? Curious. I, um, I have never made a custom LUT. I've always used Rec. 709, and I trust my meter and my monitor, my lighting monitor. Um, I use a Flanders DM170 to light to. And the only reason why I don't make a custom LUT is just because I feel like the only way to really make a LUT that's going to work for a given project, you have to have the time to do it in the sense of you know you either have the models where you can shoot some tests, and then you or you can shoot people that have similar skin tone, and then you can shoot some of the same areas or things that look similar, and you can find a space that works. But for a commercial and a music video, it's just too hard sometimes. And I, I try to look at it from a space of like I want it just to look. The way I want it to look in camera is the way I want it to look, except for a scenario like where I mentioned the Pepsi job where I wish I could have isolated her skin tone and, and made her a little more neutral. I'll make notes like that on a job. Like I've been trying to develop a system where I can I kind of have it now where I will record using like usually the VTR has, um, you know, QTake or the Teradek or something that's sending it for iPads and phones. So what I do is <clears throat> I will get the software on my iPad and I screen record as many shots as I can. And why I do that is because you can then take your screen record and you can drop it into notes. So I can literally take the video file that's saved in my iPad, drop it into notes, go underneath the video file. It now becomes this big. And then I can type in a little note about that shot, whether it's the, you know, I can, if I really want to be crazy about it, I can type in the camera notes. You know, I can have my assistant, somebody type it in with my ACs type it in or something I just want to remember about it. Like, oh, don't forget that you used, if I'm matching something, you used this lens or you used, it was this, this, and this. Or a scenario of I want to try to isolate her skin tone in post or I want to make that blue a little less saturated. You know, and while I could do that on the day in uh, on a commercial, I just... I, right now, I don't really see the value in it just because of the, the time. I don't have the time to sit with my DIT and really go over it. And I'm still, it's hard because I don't always have the same crew. You know, like if I'm, you know, if I'm at a, if I'm an ASC level cinematographer and I'm Paul Cameron level kind of thing, I, I'm going to be able to work in the budgets where I can fly a DIT all over the planet. And I can fly my focus puller. I can fly my gaffer. You know, I can fly those key numbers. I'm not there yet. So, yes, I could walk into a scenario and here, these are the LUTs I want to use. But it doesn't really do me any good. You know, I don't because the scenario is never exactly the same. And other people have different opinions. I don't think that that is the right way to do it for somebody else. That's just the way that I like to do it because it's the way I'm wired. It's the way it works for me. Right, here's a question for you. Light meter <clears throat> or false color? I think I know the about? answer. How about both? Yeah, it's and. It's and, <laughs> and or. I use both all the time. My light meter is always at my hip or it's, you know, I have a, I'm building a little station with my monitor and it's sitting right there. And, um, you know, it, sometimes I'll want to look at something very specific. You know, I'll pull out the instant meter and go right to a person's face or an area or I'll, you know, a lot of times I stand on my spot meter and I'll just, I'll look at something and I'll spot meter it just to see because, you know, 
here you want to use as many tools as you can, you know, just to see it. And, but the false color gets me out of jail. That's the it allows me to move quick when everything else is moving quick around me when I don't have the, the kind of time that I need. You know, I can make I can make choices that I necessarily don't want to make, but I know that I'm OK and I can go, yeah, yeah, we can go. You know, but it, but it also allows me to go like, no, that that's mm, I need a second. And if somebody challenges it, I hit the false color. I'm like, look at that. That means it's bad. And I walk away, you know? So, so I say both. I think you made Cody speechless. He, oh, boy. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go to this shot because I okay. freaking love this shot. Yeah. Tell so me. this so this is the final shot of the Rolls Royce spot. Um, I, I, I don't think... I think I, I have the BTS somewhere I could probably find in a second. So this is two shots married into one. It's two passes. It's a VFX shot, 100%. Really? Yeah. So I've got, in reality, there are Astera tubes less than three feet away from the car and two da uh, LED data lights hitting the um, just the rims of the car and spotted in that are very, very close. And in frame, I've got bounce cards all around the car in the front to make sure that that R, double R, you can see that. Um, there's some light in the back. There's a light in the back that's kind of kissing the back edge of the car a little bit. And all of it's in frame. And there was no real way to do it at all without just putting it in the frame and then doing a second pass. And so basically we did one pass where the car looks good, but everything's in frame. And then you pull all that out. And then you do it again. And, you know, there's, you know, tubes in the background. Like there's some Astera tubes on the ground that are creating that little light on the bottom. Um, again, you can see the yellow in the back. That, those are the natural LED tubes that are, are they're fluorescent tubes that are already in the garage that we have wrapped with gel. The overheads are, um, those are all Astera tubes. It's 32 Asteras that I put in for this long run. And we took a, this is a, this is an Alexa mini with a, I think it's a 50 mil. It's the 50 mil anamorphic. Um, it's been this, I think it's the E series. Cause one of them, I had like the 35 is like the C series or something. I can't remember which one it was. And it was the little hodgepodge of the, the set, but the C and E series are similar in optic quality. Um, and we're just on a, on a small dolly with a short jib arm and the Ronin two hanging off of it. And the camera's just, you know, almost like a techno crane or a robotic arm. So it's just, We've kind of locked everything off on the you know pan and tilt and everything. It's just actually we didn't lock it off. We we did repeat the tilt because it starts on the um, the flickering lights and then tilts down and it pushes past people and then reveals the car. So very 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 talented VFX team. Um, the guys that they're now Cameo FX. They put this together. That's so, wild. And then yeah. how about this guy? That is. The natural light of the car, obviously the headlights. Yep. It's um, you've got you can see the banks of sodium vapor lights that are on on the sides and left and right, and it's there are there's we're in a tunnel like an, an actual yep. tunnel where we had to release traffic and all that kind of stuff. So I had the ability the to turn yeah, and I and I I had the ability to turn lights on and off. And so there's closer to the section of the car there's a bunch of lights off and then the back i left some on and then that's a 18k just yeah, a, a daylight 18k much. just a just a just on it's just on in the background and the bigger the source the better because i just wanted to create some reflections and stuff like that but the smaller you make it you're obviously going to have a stand you're going to have like a little ballast you're going to have some people you know the bigger the source you can make it the more it hides, you know, it's going to, it's going to spread more. It's again, back to that kind of spread idea. So it just spreads more things out so you can hide more stuff behind, you, you know, cause I figured too, I'm like, well, I don't necessarily know exactly where they're going to hold the cars as much as I tell the production, you know, the location manager, you need to hold the cars up above that stuff changes. They don't do what you ask them to do. They never do. So <laughs> The bigger the source, if those cars come down, even if the headlights are on, I'm probably not going to see it. I'm probably not going to see the car. So that's why I went that route. And that's all it is. That's all that is for the. And then we're <laughs> we're just on. Um, or this is Ronin two, hundred mil uh, anamorphic uh, on the mini. 
and we're on a pickup, like a, like a, not a pickup truck, but the, you know, the tow truck, but we're just mounted off the tow truck and we're just doing it that way. Cause we couldn't afford a, uh, a Russian arm camera. Right. Couldn't afford it. Okay. This shot. I love this. Cause this is definitely that, that plays off of a famous art piece. Does it not? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Sure. There, yeah, there's there's a painting or a photo I, I think of of an old man sitting in a diner. I, I swear. Oh, I don't know. But it, I love this though because you got color contrast going on yeah. in there. You've got this Wait, moodiness. Tell you me. Said, that. You've got such a like four different colors. You've got you know the you can see you can see my lamp. You can see the lamp reflecting in the frame back there. It's that's an 18k um, in the back. That's just. There's just bare. You know, there's no gel in front of it. It's just going blue. Um, but it kind of looks like, well, that could be a street lamp. No, it's just a big street lamp. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's, an, it's a red neon sign that the art department put in right above that table. Um, there's a reflection. It's like a yellow reflection of some other neon that I think we placed like in another building close by. That's what you're also seeing. And then you've got the the tinge of the green and the headlights that is becoming green because of the color of the, of the mirror or of the glass. And it's just reflecting in. Um, but I've also got above the car, there's a cherry picker condor, whatever you call it, wherever you're from um, with a sky panel S 360 underneath uh, with a little skirt on it. And it's got, it also has two S one uh, twenties. So the 360 is the top light over the road so that when the car for other shots, the car drives through, it doesn't go completely dark. And then the 120 is they're red and they are pushing more light onto him. In this shot, I think they're turned off, but I turn them back on when we go, we go inside the diner to see looking out as the car drives by. <laughs> but. Okay. Let's go to a far more simple lighting. But oh, also very beautiful. One light. Yep. It's a Lico. That's all it is. It's a Lico. Interesting. Lico. How far back? What? Probably um, ten feet. Probably about ten feet. And it's probably wow. only. It's only. You know, she's. She was wearing thick platform shoes for a costume, but she's probably only like, even that costume, like five ten. So it's only, you know, not too far up above her. You know, we're just and I got a, a lamp operator on it, just panning it through. It was to create a little effect. And it, I mean, it's a prime example of, of simplicity sometimes gives you the most beautiful results. And yeah. It's a, it's that balance of finding the exposure so that, you know, fortunately for that, it's like, I just, I wanted everything to go dark. So it's fine. You know, it didn't, it didn't need to be a whole thing. And what's funny is um, when we were trying to do this, this was, I did this with Joseph Kahn and Joseph had added these shots at the last second because he knew he needed a couple more just like transitional pieces and i turned to him i was like let's i said let's do the the lico thing and he looked at me like what lico thing because we had done something similar um on a, a bb rexa video and i'd used a lico in a similar sense but it didn't i don't think it passed through it just but just that hard kind of light to it and then he was like huh and i'm like and i told him i was like really go and then he was like oh yeah yeah and he's like yeah and have it move and i was like yeah perfect and so we did all these things with the idea of like the whole concept is she's like morphing into her, you know, her hero. And so we just, we pass the light through. She's got like the logo on her, her, uh, the front of her costume and, you know, like her, her pan was like in a fist and, and then her face and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Uh, here's a question from Cody. I may have missed it, but when you <laughs> bid for these kinds of jobs, do you mood board typically with your agency or do they just come to you and say, do your thing? Good question. Um, Sometimes it's, eh, it's kind of both. You're know, like, sometimes they'll come and they'll want to see like, either they've already, like for Rolls Royce, they brought a mood board to the table and then, oh wait, my hair looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, it looks terrible. It is crazy. <laughs> Anyways, they, so they bring, um, you know, they brought a, a mood board to the table and they were like, this is what we're going for. And I was like, okay. And so then, I started diving into things and looking at things and I'd pull different shots and, you know, I, I looked at some other stuff and, and showed them some inspiration. They're like, Oh yeah, yeah, we like that. We like that. Um, I don't think there's ever really a moment of a, like, 
and I know Cody that you're not just trying to say like, oh, they just give you carte blanche, and just do your thing. But it's there's usually something. It can be very rudimentary. It can be very small. Um, sometimes the music videos are totally left up to what the director and what I want to do. Like the BB Rexa is a great example because I just did another Fiat spot. We so we did a this was before the one that we've been looking at. We did a project for Fiat with Sting and Shaggy. If you remember the it wasn't me guy, the um, the reggae singer from the two thousands. Sting and Shaggy have an album together. It's cool. So Fiat wanted to do a music video commercial with Sting and he wanted it to be with Shaggy. So we did a whole thing with them and it was a really cool concept. It's a great video. It's one of the one of my favorite ones that we've done. And we shot that in Italy as well. And or, no, sorry, that was Barcelona, Spain. And um great, great group of people out there. A lot of Italians actually uh, came out to work on the job. That's why I was thinking of Italy. Um but that was coming off that job, I literally was very fortunate to I left at like 6 a.m. Barcelona time, landed at 8 p.m. L.A. time, and then within an hour, I was on another scout for a music, another music video with with Joseph. We're doing the BB Rex video that I've mentioned a couple of times. And what was cool about the BB video was like she and her team were just like, Joseph's so great, and, and you guys do your thing, and it was just like create cool stuff. And what was kind of cool about that one is he was also getting ready for another job while we were shooting that. And so he showed me a couple of things, like literally like three images and just went, think pop videos, think like colorful. And I was like, okay. And then he just, we, I, that was one of my favorite projects to do with him because he, he really just let me do, I just did whatever I wanted. And he was just, he'd walk in the room and be like, yeah, this is cool. I like this. You know, or there'll be a couple of times where he, you know, he's he's always very into he's into cinematography, which I really like about him because it's not just somebody that goes like, eh, or yeah, like th like they don't really have an opinion because they're too afraid to like have an opinion. He has an opinion one way or the other, and what's great sometimes is he'll. It's great in two ways. Sometimes he'll come in and I'm I'm like getting close, and then he'll grab something, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, perfect. Like I hadn't got to that yet, but it makes it perfect. Or another time, which I really love, and he would hate hearing this, but it's like he'll do something and it doesn't work, and then I'll come up with something and it works, and he and he's like, ah, cool. And I know he doesn't give, he doesn't care, he doesn't care whether or not. But I'm like, hey, I got, you. I got that one. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but it's but that was fun. Like he's always, he's always pushing to try to just do something creative. So I think there's, I feel like music videos, there's an opportunity more in a commercial, um, and I would think. This is why I like music videos because I think it lends to films more, depending on the film, uh, where you get more freedom. Um, and like I've talked with Pearl a bit about this and, and Daniel Pearl and, and other DPs about when they do certain shows and depending on who the showrunner is, the executive producer, um, whether or not where you get the control or you get the freedom. You know, because I remember Shane telling me about doing the show for AMC into the Badlands and. You know, he's trying to convince them to do it all as a big oneer and pushing into the close up, and they're like, "Okay, we can do that, sure." And then they do it. And they're like, "All right, now let's shoot the coverage." And he's like, "But we already did it." It's like, "Yeah, but we should still do it anyways." You know, and it's like those are going to be things that happen. You know, you're going to have to you know give up some of those things that you don't really want to do sometimes. So, all right, let's go to this shot here. So this one's more of that what we had looked before with the the big top lay. It's um it's the same it's the same shot yeah. as the car one. okay very much the same shot as the car one and she's kind of just walked past the um the light above her and i'm yeah we were walking with something i'm trying to remember what we had probably we something china, wanted, ball, or... china ball or something it's just a soft led source it might have been like a light mat it's probably you know it was it was most like a light mat because i did have light mats on the job probably like a light mat four um, just dimmed down, but just like kind of to the side a little bit. And then this is just the Ronin and I'm actually operating. It's the Ronin um, with the Venice and like a 35, it's like about 35 mil and then just coming straight back. And then just trying to keep her centered as much as possible. And they're kind of trying to, they're going on like a V formation kind of thing. So, yeah. All right. And then this one, 
So this is our stage. This is green screen. Um, the only things oh. that are real, the, f the floor is not real. That was all uh -huh. changed later. The thing that she's standing up against is real. The little like tow the little uh, door thing there with the light coming out of it, that's real. And there's like a little like these little pipes and grates behind him. All the stuff in the background is all that's all visual effects plates. Um, well, you did a fantastic job lighting that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So and this was this was not super challenging. It was trying to just add some practical, you know, elements in there. Like we put some Astera tubes, you know, on top of something over there and just like we covered it with some paint and stuff. Like we put the tubes inside of like a, a holder and then we mounted the tube kind of to try to light her. Because the idea is too is that they walk, they walk into a space and then start, you know, they interact and then he pushes her off the ledge, uh, kind of thing. So yeah. All right. Um, this one is this is this more yeah. VFX screen screen? more more VFX like he's there that piece behind him is there over her right shoulder is fake all the the water droplets are fake um, and it is still green screen she's lit she's lit with a sky panel on her left side camera right um, going through some uh, like a four by diffusion like a two fifty like a like a like a thin you know light light right. diffusion um, yeah. All right, and then this last one here. I hate green screen, by the way. I hate it. Just not, yeah. I won't go there. All right, so this is back <laughs> to the Rolls Royce. Yeah, so this is the entrance to that parking garage that I mentioned. So the idea is we slot, we, we come off the wall off of darkness and then just reveal like these, you know, people walking by the car. And I don't know where the 15K back in there. I think it's a twelve k actually. I think. Um, I think you put I, a lot of diffusion, a lot, of, a lot of fog. I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of haze, a lot of atmosphere. There is a, a couple of tubes that I think are already practically there, and then we just let them play. And then I added some. Um, I think this is a twelve k HMI actually, and then I added because I think it was at HMIs on the truck, and I added CTO in front of it or CTS, one of the two, just kind of create a little color contrast. And then when the car drives further down, it drives under a red light, which is just a, a sky panel S120 just suspended from above. They, they put like a, a series of grid. They're actually, I think we put it up on a jib arm and we were able to like fit it into the car to still drive around. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's a question in the commercial world. Do you get much of a say in the grading process? Uh, it depends. Um, I'd say, 75% of the time I don't, um, I know that's, that's where like, I wish I had the freedom and the, I, I like the freedom is there. You can make it happen, but it becomes political of doing it on set and trying to do it, you know, with your DIT where you kind of like build in looks and give it to them. Um, but there's, there's always scenarios where if you don't know the full, you know, especially like a car commercial, you know, I remember when we were in Italy shooting that Panda Fiat, which is like a chocolate Brown, it's a Brown car. I'm just using the Sony 709 LUT, which the Sony LUT is a, has a tinge of green to it, just kind of the way it is. I don't really like it, but I just use it. Um, the client was very concerned. They were like, is, is our car green? Is it going to be green? I'm like, no, no, no. It's just, <laughs> you're just looking at a reference. And they're like, oh, okay. And they were very trusting, so which is nice. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't get a lot of time, and I don't think a lot of DPs do because just, they just move so fast, you know, but, the job is we're just going to get it out. So. All right. Yeah. All right. Next question is quasars or Astera <laughs> in the shot overrated. This movie set memes keeps telling me not to use them. <laughs> <laughs> movie set memes. I think, I think that they're, um, I, I don't think it's overrated. I think it's a little overused. Like at least the way I tried to do it in the, in the, uh, the way we were doing it in that Rolls Royce spot was, I tried to hide them inside of like a fixture that would naturally be inside of a parking garage like that. And then I still had some tubes in the background and stuff like that. And I tried to place them in other areas. So it wasn't just like obvious that it was a, a stereo. Yeah, you're, you're motivating them using them right. as, as, as right. practical as best as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I see it like they look cool. You know, they're, they're fine for certain things, but I feel like, They've, it's been overdone to the point of where like just the bare tube is just being laid out. You're kind of like, you know, but then again, it's like, okay, we notice it, you know, filmmakers notice it, but as the audience, probably not. 
you know, if it looks cool, it looks cool. You know, I think it's what matters. That's a good point. Cause if the audience still goes, that looks so cool, then you yeah. know what? They're going to keep coming back to it. Exactly. Yeah. So do you have any other uh, shots you want to send me? We could talk yeah, about I can send, I can send those really quick. Um, let me, let me pull up my Switch me up here. Yeah. So if you're following along at the home game, uh, put your questions down below. We'll get we'll get them in here. David is a wealth of knowledge, super nice guy, and really talented. So I mean, put your questions down there. We're we're uh, we're putting them almost all in there, just because we can. Um, and just like this one right here, um, Tim also wants those pancakes and peanuts. Yeah, I saw the pancake mix back there too. Oh yeah, I, I was gonna make that. a joke about that earlier. You know, it's funny. It's right before we started, I, I was like, I should turn that box around. It looks silly. <laughs> it's funny because I think, like both Chris and I, my my girlfriend, um, she and I, like we cook sometimes. But ever since you know this this whole thing has hit everybody, like we haven't left the house. You know, we go out once a day to go on a walk, and we're not doing takeout. We're just cooking for ourselves. And so one day she was like, "We're I'm gonna get some pancake mix," and I was like. We've literally never made pancakes. I'm like, yeah, and then we make, and I and I'm making them, and I'm like, God, it's so I haven't done this in forever. I'm like, pancakes are wonderful, and, I'm, and it's crazy. So I'm like, all the places we go, and we, we'll go have breakfast and spend twenty five dollars. I'm like, we just did that for like four dollars. I'm like, God, we should oh, do it more often. They have since we're on the uh, you know, the cooking channel right now. They have these little nine dollar uh, waffle makers. They're tiny. What? Uh, no way. Yeah, they're they're nine dollars. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them in your grocery store in the like the little pan section That's and they're cool. amazing because you can make little perfect they look about the size of an ego it takes like three minutes no it's way. worth it when you when you really really want that ego uh <laughs> fix, you know okay i'll i got a couple that i'll show you how many people you got watching i'm curious because uh 15 right now all right i'll share this with 15 people i'll send you no, this one because it, it's it's been up and down i think we peaked at 22 for that's cool there. i just want to i'll share this because this is this is something that is cool. I'll send this to you right now, but it's it's something that I don't necessarily want to share with like a a huge amount of people. But I'm happy to share. Well, it. so do it's keep fine. in mind I leave these up. Yeah, so, no, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. What is the pancake place next to the DGA? Pancake place is the DGA. I don't uh, know. You talk about the place we ate at, Tim, or maybe I don't remember. <sighs> and Kevin's still here. Come on, Kevin, ask some questions, man. I'm still here. I got your I got your download by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Um let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh, you can't you don't you don't hear anything when I play a video on my end, right? Uh I don't know. I can I can certainly mute you if you need me to. No, I don't think so. That's okay, probably, yeah, you're probably fine. Okay, cool. I'm just seeing if I'm just looking through um going through my I've got like, I'm going through my hard drives right now and I'm like, it's like desktop cleanup one, desktop cleanup two. And I'm, and I'm, like, I, I'm like, I know I have frame grabs in there and I just, that's where I found the one and sent it to you. Um, I, I use the old desktop model. So I have old desktop <laughs> one, old desktop two, and those get stuck inside of old desktop one. It's true. So true. Um, because I've got some, I'm trying to see, like I've got some cool stuff. Uh, let's see. Here. Oh, wait, here's another folder. Here's another cleanup. Open. That's, oh, really cool. That's a good that case. one. Okay, good there. So we can talk about that one. Um, they have the largest pancakes ever, says Tim. Are you Tim? Are you talking about that place that we went that we ate, or are you talking about a different place? Oh, we always go to that that diner. Oh, the diner. Um, Mel's diner. I think yeah, Mel's is where we always go. He may be talking about someplace else. The one by the ASC Clubhouse, maybe. Uh, that's the yeah, that's the one I was thinking. Okay, you just sent me some more. So I see um, I see some BTS photos of the Sting Fiat project I did as well. Tim goes back. Tim does backup o one, backup o two, tempo one, tempo two. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Here, let me see. Uh, I've got them all. It's like desktop cleanup. Oh, here we go. Here's some. Okay, here's some good. I'll send you these too. These are good. These are some from the BB Rexa piece. And those are more Ava Max. But here's this is a we can talk about the BB one. I was hoping I didn't have to like, hold on, I need to get in Premiere real quick. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, if you need to. It's... 
But the only thing I'm worried about is my camera over there. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it's got USB plugged in, but the USB is not quite strong enough to keep it going forever. Uh oh. We will see. Hopefully. Hopefully. So if I drop out, just hang on. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll make you the star. <laughs> You'll hang on. You'll come right back. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Uh, I'm just checking one more folder. I'm just I'm trying to see if I have any of these DJ Khaled video frame guys. See, I here. love that DJ Khaled one. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the freeze frame one. That was yeah, that was the freeze frame one was cool. Oh, here's a Coles video I did with, with Sierra. I also did these too. I was like, I know I pulled all these frame grabs. I did this. We did a Coles commercial with Sierra, which was really cool, which was funny because it was like, oh, BTS, nice. You know, set up like a music video. I say that Meow Mix one. All the cats. Oh, that's cat right. Stuff. Oh, my God. All the cats. It's hilarious. Um, let's see. This one's good. Oh, this one. I'll, oh, we should definitely talk about this one. This this Pearl Company that I did in Greece. This one's a fun one because this is a good example of like a. It's, it's almost like a spec, and I'll explain that if we get if we can get to it. Um, I'm just I'm I'm just overloading See, you now. This is no, <laughs> this is great because this is the best way for me to collect a whole bunch of BTS. There you go. <laughs> That's like yeah. a review. Oh, this you is good stuff. Else. Oh yeah, just we'll else. pull these up. This I love this. Um, I'm saving. Everybody's watching me live. Save everything. <laughs> um. Oh, and here's a picture. Let's send you a picture of the robotic of the mover light that we use on Pepsi too, just so you can we can share that with people. And then um, let's see, where is? And then we can let's see the Google Pixel Buds. I'll send you that one. A live show come together in live. In live, I'll send you the Google Pixel Buds one because that's the one shot on the Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera, and I think it's ah. a good example of. You know the power of using of the expensive small. cameras. Yeah, I mean these expensive cameras for big projects. So, um, oh, these are some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, you found a whole new. You see what else I've got? If there's anything? Come well, on, that's really old. <laughs> like, oh wow, I didn't even know this folder still existed. Yeah, you're, you're on desktop any... clean desktop four. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to see. I'm like, I know I've got Ooh. some shots oh. of. I'm hoping I, I I wish I had some of those um, the shots of the shots of the, the shots of the Sting and Shaggy video just as a reference. Um, the Griddle Cafe says Tim. Griddle Cafe. I don't think I've been there. I can I can do a screen share on my end, can I? Can that work? Is I don't screen? know. Can't, does it say share your screen? It does because I can pull up my Vimeo really quick. Well, that would well. Or that kill you? Yeah, you you'd, you'd uh, get me copyright copyright. Well, if I if I mute it, if I mute it though, uh, the video will pick up. Oh, it'll pick up the video. Mm hmm. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, while you're copyright pulling, strike you instantly. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'll um. I have the Sting and Shaggy video and all the and the other ones. I can just pull a couple like. Three for like two or three frames from each, just so we have some reference. Because this thing in Shaggy one's kind of cool. For it was the it was a Fiat music video thing. Tim, also um, know if you have any BTS of that Imagine Dragons video. I don't think I have any BTS of it. You're sending me a ton. This is okay. awesome. Tim, you're supposed to have the BTS for that because you're That's the true, DMT. Tim. <laughs> you're what the you doing, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. You're just sitting at your computer doing nothing. Yeah, just downloading <laughs> footage. Oh, he just presses the enter key. Come on. He just says copy. Right. So, okay. Let's see. Actually, I might have to send you a couple more. Man, these are pretty. Wow. This one was fun. This I'm looking at this Sting and Shaggy one. This one was cool. The whole concept of this, this so the whole concept of this thing in Shaggy video, we could talk about this one, is this girl wakes up in her bed and then she keeps like falling and waking up and going through like her daily routine and she keeps waking up in Sting's recording studio. <laughs> and uh, she just keeps like it's like she like literally the point where like she like rolls off like we kind of like dolly past the bed and we reveal the studio or something, and it's like the bed is like lifted up and she's like standing against the bed in order to make the effect work. You know, it's a lot of in-camera practical effects with a little bit. Of, there's some VFX tie-in stuff to it. Um, 
And I think if you really look with a close eye, you can see the VFX stuff that's like, oh, that I can tell that's VFX. Um, and then here, I'll see this shot. That's great. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to save it away. Uh, oh, that. okay. Here we go. And then save as. Bear with us, folks. Get those questions down below so we can yeah. uh, get those questions answered. Gosh, you're sending me more than you did originally. I like this. The pixel, these are the Google, the Pixel Bud. The Pixel one's cool. That was a good one. Uh, yeah. Lots of VFX. No, that was all on camera. <laughs> There's a ton of different looks in this one. Tim says, no, I didn't take any photos on set. Should have made that a mandate. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so here's a good, okay, so I'll send you these on the Sting and Shaggy one, we can talk about that. Um, one second, okay. on the desktop. My desktop is destroyed right now. It's like, oh my God, it's yeah. so things. I've, I've actually just, just following along, I've got Weldon and Weldon 1 now is a different form. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just sent, I'm sending you the Sting stuff right now. Okay. We can start. We can start with that. So we'll, we'll clear the the dead air. There's still people on here. Still people oh on. yeah, Kevin's Kevin's yeah. still there. Oh yeah, we got um, we got ten people right now. Okay, cool. Um, I would have thought I would have been fired immediately. <laughs> <since Tim. laughs> no, never, never. Uh, so, and Nathaniel Brown says, "What's up, Scott? Really interested to hear about the Google Pixel spot with the Black Magic." pocket cinema camera so yeah we can yeah. we can hit that one here let me um you could start setting up for it and i will start loading these in yeah i do that we can talk about the google one first yeah we'll do the google one first yeah okay um so i went to so my um i went to google i did this project in miami we went to miami to do this thing so we were doing two spots for google that was the launch of their new pixel book uh go so they're like i guess like MacBook Air competitor and the Pixel earbuds, which I don't think are actually out yet. I think they got delayed. Um, it's supposed to be their new earbuds, their Bluetooth earbuds. We, excuse me. The reason why we went to Miami was because we were doing a zero gravity shoot um, for the, the Pixel book for the actual laptop. So we went into a zero gravity plane. So the plane literally does these parabolas of flying up and down and flying up and down. If Austin's still on the stream, he was very much involved in this. And he is one of the only focus pullers that I know of that can shoot in zero gravity and pull focus without throwing up. Um, <clears throat> so we went and did that shoot with the, we had a, a um, she was like an acrobat kind of dancer person that could float around and do things with her body and in the air and whatnot. And kind of, cause it's, you know, like what you think it was just, you're just floating. It's kind of nuts. And it lasts for like 20 seconds. So you do all these 20 second intervals and all this stuff. Um, so the other spot we did, and I was like, that's cool. Like just a brief, you can look at it. It's like, yeah, it's cool. But like, it's just camera pre-existing lights that are already built into this ship. And that's it. Like there's, there's very little that, that had to be done. It's all coordination. It, the rest of it was all coordination and art department and that kind of stuff. The, you know, those people were the real magicians behind it all. Um, we can start to talk about that one later. But the um, so the Pixel Book one was they wanted to mirror what the Beats by Dre spots had done. If you'd seen those with all the professional athletes, where the camera seemed like locked to the ear, like it was like no matter where the person moved, the logo on the product just stayed like frozen. So I've figured out who. Yeah, I was like, okay, a lot of these were body cam rigs and stuff like that. And in this particular spot, they wanted every frame to be rigged to the body. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take a look and see what, um, you know, what we can do and, you know, whatnot. And so I found out the company is a company called Doggy, Doggy Cam Systems. They're based in Burbank. Um, they make the body rig. You know, there's the Snorri Cam, which is the more Kleenex. You know, they're not the first one, but they're the second one that is made exactly. They've made the um, the uh, the first rig that people know of. I talked to Story Cam. I tested it. I looked at it. I didn't like it. 
Um, my problem with it is it's only, it's basically like a post that comes off of wherever you mount it. And so there's a lot of flex. You could certainly, you know, rig to it, but I just, I didn't like the system as much. And so I went and talked to the guy's name's Gary at Doggy Cam. And he's got a system that is designed behind multiple points of contact and a whole vest system that, you know, essentially you can tighten onto anybody. And it's, you know, the kind of thing where you could slide it up and slide it down and have a lot more rigidity to it. So I, um, you know, everybody was like, oh, yeah, you can put an Alexa Mini, you can put a red on it, you can put as much as you want. But, you know, everybody said the same thing. And it was Gary at Doggy Cam that really sold me on the idea of trying to do it with the Black Magic, you know, because he was saying, like, you know, he's an older guy. He's like, hey, you should do a 5D. And I was like, I'm not going to do a 5D. Like, there's better stuff now. And um, the reason why was because you really want to know the shape, weight, and size of each person that you're going to, you know, put this thing on. And <clears throat> it just, we I, we were going to use 11 different talent on one day, and I they hadn't booked them yet. And I was like, oh, just, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. So this was actually with the Pocket 4K camera because – Literally the day of the prep, they announced the 6K. So I now have this. I have a 6K now. I sold the 4K and I bought a 6K. So it was my camera. I used a. I bought the Speed Booster Metabones Micro Four Thirds to PL the Speed Booster, the one with the glass inside of it, and so that way I could actually like expand beyond shooting, you know at a micro fourth or a sensor. Cause I just, I knew I was like, this is not going to work. And I don't, I, I was talking to a friend. I was thinking about using his Vedra lenses, but at the time some of his lenses were out on a rental. And so I was like, well, I can't risk like not having all the focal lengths. And so we shot this on zines, the pocket 4k and the speed booster. And a lot of it is at one five, a T one five or a T two. So imagine if you're at a T15, you're technically at like a 1-2 because the speed booster, speed booster actually increases the amount of light that comes in because you're expanding the sensor. You're trying to expand across the plane of the sensor. Um, you know, we shot 4K RAW and um, you know, I just used the standard LUT out of the camera. And I, I do have a BTS picture of it somewhere and this is all body rig. The camera is just mounted to the person. Um, actually, I have it in my photos real quick. I can, I can scroll to it and send it to you, Scott, so you can show everybody. Yep. Um, yeah, and then people were, you know, we needed to be able to have the flexibility of people walking. And, you know, one person was running. The final shot of the piece is not on the body rig. It's actually on a movie. Um, just because we had to, like, she was running and we came off of the rig. And hindsight because we were kind of rushed. I would have, the, the hardest part about doing that Moby shot was it didn't quite match up as I was like running with this person and trying to, you know, mirror it all of her running and then me, you know, it's supposed to be like a locked frame. And they, they stabilized it a little bit in post, but it wasn't perfect. In reality, what I wish I had done was taken a rickshaw, created a little box with speed rail that went out and around her. So it was out of frame, but it was, you know, enough to keep her like she couldn't run faster than what I could go, which might have may not have worked. It's very plausible that it wouldn't have worked um, because maybe she would have run too fast or something or it could have been dangerous. But I would have tested it at least um, because the problem really became either she got too far ahead or I got too far ahead. and We were never just like together. And I think that would have you know helped out a lot. But I'm. I can find this. I know I've got the photo. I just, I'm literally searching through my Google photos, like a thousand photos um, mm -hmm. that'll have the behind the scenes of it. Um, of, Cause I took pictures of the rig. Cause I was like, well, I better remember how to do this later on. Right. Um, you know, cause it's, you know, we, cause even when I got to, um, when I got to Miami, I still, uh, actually I'll download this one too. Cause that'll be a good one to send you. There's something I could share. It's a good lesson. Um, when I got to Miami, it was the kind of situation of like, well, I want to make sure I don't, you know, I don't miss it. Oh, wow. I have a lot more behind the scenes of the Fiat job than I thought I did. But I sent you a good amount. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I can send it to you later. But, oh, here's, I'll send this one too. This one's a good one. Um, now I'm like in the wrong, <laughs> the wrong area of my Google 
folder. Hold I'm on looking. Second. There's Alexa. I'm just looking at all the BTS that you sent me. Yeah. I just need. To, I need to go through and download all my stuff. Yeah, and you need you need to uh, you know, keep notes for yourself too keep about notes. what. Yeah. You're, while that's you have big, all this time. That's a big one to be able to. It's, I think it's really important to go back and you know download all of your photos you've taken and, and categorize them. I like to use Google Drive as like a virtual filing cabinet. Right. And then I break down every single project by folder and I put everything that's related to those projects in that folder. Well, and, um, and, and you can inspire way. yourself sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you can go back yeah. and you can look at how you did something. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. It's like I've seen her. I've got a couple scout photos that don't really tell us anything. They're some of her just bigger wide shots of certain jobs. But um, yeah, it's always good to just have those things in place. Oh, here's a good one. I can, here's, this is a good example of, of something to use for that. We could talk about the Coles job too. Yeah. Um, so let's let's pull up a BTS here, so you can talk about that because people love BTS, yeah. especially me. So let's find. I just got. I just found the body rig. This is perfect. Oh, perfect. So I'll download all this. And I'll send this to you. But and let me click back to the link. Okay, cool. So this is one of the BTS of the Sting. The Sting uh, job. Oh wait, before I get to that, my folder just downloaded. So I'm going to send you these other images real quick. While we're doing this, and I will create a Weldon three. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll go back to that. So, so yeah. So this was, um, this was that we did a music video called "One Lifetime" for Sting and Shaggy for their album, but it was also a like sponsored piece for Fiat. So the idea was they were going to go through this whole journey, and the girl our hero girl, the video was going to, at some point get in her Fiat and pick up her girlfriend and go to a concert. And the idea was the, the, the concept is she's like, she wakes up and she kind of like, she goes throughout her day, she gets in the shower and then she, she steps out of the shower. She walks into the background of where these, these guys are sitting and she's like covered herself with a towel. She's naked. And she's like, Oh my God. And then, she kind of like dries off, jumps around, and then she and then like something happens, and she wakes back up, and she's now she's in her bed, and she's like, and now her bed's in the middle of this place, and she's like, "What? I'm back in here!" And then so she starts jumping around the guys, and she's like singing, like, "Hey, hey!" Waving her arms, they don't they don't see her. The well, idea is that they don't see her. So then she somehow kind of like transports through this. She's going through the doors in the back, like there's these two doors, and she jumps through one of the doors, and she falls through this like the sheeted area and she's like back in her bed. And then we cut to, she's in her apartment and she's like, okay. And then she leaves, she gets in the car and she drives to go get her friend. And then when she's at the concert, that's a karaoke bar, I guess, not a concert. They're singing on stage and then Sting and Shaggy get up and start singing with them and they're singing their song. And then, you know, that that's what it, it, it ends. Kind of. So it was a cute little video. It was a fun video. Um, it was very, okay. um, very challenging to, to do, but it was very cool. Um, do you want to? Do you have the shot, like the main yep. shot? Of this one. Let's show the main shot real quick, and then I'll go back to this. Of, of the shaggy one. Of yeah. this, yeah, this BTS shot. So I can. Uh, was it the? There. Gosh, which one is it? There's like a wide shot of the two of them just singing with their microphones. I I sent it to you in the last batch. Not that one. We'll get to that. Let me un let me undo this real quick here. This doesn't work, by the way. The one the one that, that you just pulled up. It doesn't work. Uh, yeah, because that, that looked like the little Sony R0. It was. It was that was a test for the Google Pixel uh spot. It, was a test for it. it didn't work. Uh, okay. Is this I think this is the one you were looking for. Uh about here. Is that the no, not that, but the one like actually the one I sent from camera. So like it's oh, it's, not, it's not a BTS, it's an actual like the frame. Well, let's see if I can find that. <laughs> I know I say a bunch of stuff. I say like fifty photos. Um, um we got lots of coals. Yeah. I did them before that. Um see if I got it loaded in yet. Uh, nope. well, maybe, I could, um, maybe I could screen share, but I don't know. Yeah, if you want to screen yeah, share. I got it in front. Hold on, let me close all my 
Let me close my open tabs. <laughs> Make sure you hide the the, uh, the unmentionables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like millions of YouTube tabs of just stuff. Right. That's Well, that's what literally what mine looks like. Everybody's been seeing my my Chrome that I have here. I just don't want to crash. I just don't want to crash because I've got a million things. Oh, yeah, there. I get you. Let me close that. Close that. That's why I'm uh, using like, Firefox for the stream. But oh, there you go. That's smart. Let me close this one. Close. I love all these BTS though. Lighting mod fire. I want to pull up those BTS. <laughs> okay, let me do. Okay, so I can do um, screen share. Screen share. Open. Hold on, I gotta open system preferences and say that it's okay. Yeah. You're, you're, oh, it's gonna I'm make cool. me. It's gonna make me quit though. Oh, your camera? It's going to make me quit Google Chrome and then open it back up. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Let me see uh, if it will do it without just send it. Me the, send me the image and I'll open it up last. That'll, that'll make it easier. Okay. Let me do that. Here, I'm going to stick it. That way, because I've got the uh, the rig up, if you want to talk about that that one rig. Uh, sure. You can do that. Let me jump back to that. Let me send you this one too, real quick. So that's the it will jump back. That's the pocket 4K in the body rig. So that's back to the Google Pixel thing, real quick. Um, so this, so you can see the body rig attached to her. It's got a bright tangerine map box on there. Thank you, Rob. Misfit Adam. It's the best. Adam. I'm using. I am using ND filters. I'm using. Uh, I think it was the Nisi ND filters, which are mine. I think I brought those with me, and. Um, it's you know we've got on the opposite end of her the the rods extend to counterbalance and there's weight and there's also a, a battery plate a gold mount plate that is you know powering the camera a video transmitter everything and then it's all the I've got I had custom PTAP cables made that's extension cables just running up the you know the thing. I think um, there was a second <laughs> image of it too. Let me find yeah, there, there was yeah, and so. You know, for me, the reason why shooting on this camera was more about weight. It was all about trying to get something that was small enough that um, go. wasn't going to flex. You know, like, yeah, it's, it's, you see how that it weighs like six pounds. You know, and she's a little person. This woman is very small. She's like five, six. She probably weighs like 105 pounds, you know, soaking wet. It's like, you know, it's like, I, I didn't know. Like, are we going to have a small woman, a, a big, burly guy? You know, what are we going to have? So, to me, having a um, Alexa Mini or a Red package or something on there, you know, like a Red Komodo would have been a great. Oh, uh, Komodo would have been this. good. It's a good yeah. size, yeah. It's a good These size. pocket cameras are, are perfect yeah. for this. You know, and I think, and, and it was more like, yeah, if I knew a little bit more about exactly what all the action was going to be, you know, there's certain spots. There's like a, there's a shot where the guy's like, He's in the subway and he's whole, just standing there. Yeah, Red or an Alexa would have been fine. She's walking down the street and you still feel a little bit of, of give in the rig. You know, there's a guy doing pull ups, you know, and, and he's all he's doing is you know, he's standing on Apple boxes and he's just standing up. But just that movement, anything to, to decrease camera movement was the goal, you know. And, and I think the whole time we were on a 24 millimeter zine, you know most likely wide open, just trying to keep it as soft as possible. You can see that um, the adapter there, the little lens support on it. And it's, um, you know, and Austin was pulling focus on this and he's using his C-Motion wireless follow focus, which has the MDR built into the motor, which helped a lot, just less things you have to put on it. You know, and then obviously this <coughs> chaos of cables, you know, and I think I had like a, uh, you know, a 25 foot HDMI cable that's coming out of the camera and I'm using the Tilta cage for it that has a little HDMI adapter. So you're not worried about damaging anything, you know, so. But it worked and that's, it worked. The, that's, the, that's the name of the game right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you wanted that one. Nope. Not that one. It was this one. Pull it up. The last one right here. This is no other one. This that one. One. There we go. That one. Okay. So we can move into the Sting and Shaggy piece. Um, so this is supposed to be Sting's recording studio. It's not his actual studio. We're shooting. No, it doesn't look a thing like a studio. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> shooting in his, like, and we're shooting in a, um, in like a, like a castle in Barcelona. 
and you can see our actress. She's naked in the background, just being. <laughs> and you know that this was before she like she reaches over and grabs the towel on the couch and covers herself up. And um, you know, obviously, a lot of practical lamps. Everything's on dimmer. Every single light in there. The little lens flare up above is um, a Leco that is literally behind the banister. We were trying to flare the lenses. Um, we had, this is the first time we had used. We used the master anamorphics on an Alexa mini package, and we were trying to use the special flare optical attachment that Ari and Zeiss made for the master anamorphics. It's a rear and front element attachment, I believe. I think they had to just replace two elements, and we never used it before. So I was like, oh, let's try it out. And so we were like trying to put things in frame to see how they would flare. It doesn't really, you know, like master anamorphics don't flare, they're very clinical, very like perfect anamorphic lenses um but i've got you know above and then in those bts photos you can see that like i used an eight by eight light tile above the two guys above sting and shaggy to light them and then i'm using the um what the hell is that thing called it's the uh it's like the led parabolic light that like year makes with another company mess up my hair um i forget the name of it right now i don't use it a lot but i wanted to use it on this job just to try it out and it was kind of it was yeah you can see it on the stand there it's on a like on a menace arm kind of rig and then there's the lcd is on the eight by eight and that just again it was the idea of wanting to have the control of spread you know not i didn't want to get up there with tungsten lights and then all of a sudden lose you know like, oh, i gotta turn bulbs off and stuff like that so i use the light tile and it was a little cheaper to use the light tile, at least where we were at, versus putting a bunch of sky panels up there. So I used the light tile. And I didn't need color. I just needed daylight or tungsten. And then outside, behind the stained glass windows, are two 4K HMIs just pounding the glass because we knew we were going to get into some darkness. And I didn't want the light level outside to change. Um, and then there's some you know, some tungsten lights on the ground or, or I forget exactly. It might be dado lights lighting up the red band, the red, you know, curtains that are falling down. And then it's, um, we did end up putting our own bulbs in a lot of the fixtures that were already there. Like the hanging, the hanging things in the sconces on the wall. Like we put our own, we went and changed them out and put smaller bulbs in them so that we could have some more control because they were much brighter and they were just blowing out, you know, trying to use this stuff practically as much as we could. So, yeah, that's that one. Yeah. It's a cool, it's a cool project. I did that. That was done like last Jan, not this January of 2019. Uh, this is. That's BTS of that. It's Joseph on the camera operating. He likes to operate quite a bit. Um, and this is in the final scene when we are, you know, Sting and Shaggy have now shown up to, uh, you know, they're going to sing with the girls in the karaoke. And you know, there's a little bounce card to, you know, catch. I had a, a light mat four above the stage as like a little just topper stage light. And those are dado lights on a bar that just have cuts of gel. And we just kind of played them practically like they were yeah. just a part of the stage, you know. Simulated uh, parts. Yeah, yeah, simulated parts. And then, um, we actually used a wine glass as a little front element in front of the lenses on some of those shots in that little sequence, just to just add a little character to it, just because we were dollying through things. And this was, I say this shot just as a, she's getting out of the shower. Um, oh, that's your cut. to the Yes, our cut. So it's practical. It's not VFX. This is real. And nice. the hardest part about this was trying to, there's a whole bunch of sequences of her in the act, like her, like, you see her feet in the shower. So we had to move this fake shower into this room and pour water like on the wall and all this stuff. And then we had to move it back into our shower area and shoot it later. So I shot this before I shot the shower. So I had to do two things. One, I had to keep the integrity of the tungsten warmer feel that Sting and Shaggy are in. And two, I had to maintain whatever color and quality of light was going to be on her in this moment had to match what I was going to do later, which I hadn't done yet, obviously, because it was being done later. So, you know, keeping notes of that was, 
was a task in itself, especially when, you know, I'm, I'm working with an entirely new crew. This was my first international job. My first job, my first job I've ever done internationally where I don't speak the same language as the people there. They speak, everybody speaks Spanish. They speak Spain Spanish. My girlfriend is from Mexico and she speaks Spanish, but unless she's swearing at me, I don't know what she's saying. So, <laughs> but it was funny when you, you, I was fortunate enough to where we had just come back from vacation, uh, Christmas vacation, and we stayed with her family. So I was around, I don't, I do not speak Spanish at all, but I get a sense of what's trying to be said. So that did help a lot for this job. And by the end of it, I was like, let's do another Spanish speaking job. It'll be, I'll be able to know what's going on. So. All right, let's switch here to this BTS. This is, is this the Coles? Okay. This is, no, this is the, from the BB Rexa video. So. There's, there's another BTS where you can see the shot of the frame, but this is, I wanted to share this one with a small group because um, it's, it's a good example of getting yourself out of a jam really quick and trying to understand the parameters of what the space is you're playing. In. So we're shooting this video, we're downtown LA and Joseph wanted to get the rooftop, like iconic, like Madonna shot kind of feel like that's what he was, he wanted to go for. And so we're like, I'm literally like, as he's shooting and we're doing stuff, like we're redoing takes and, you know, Movi's pulling back with walking takes or whatever with her. I'm like, I'm not even paying attention to the frame at this point. My gaffer's looking at it. Austin is pulling focus. He's looking at it. I'm looking at the sun and I'm making calculations of like how much time and Joseph's looking at me. He's like, I have time for another one. I'm like, yes, you can do one more. You know, he's asking me, he's not even asking her AD. And, and then, so finally I'm like, we have to get upstairs and he's like, okay. So it's like three blocks away. It's up 20 flights or 30 flights to the roof. And so we've already got like a package ready to go. Like we've got a, you know, a, a couple putt putts, I think originally I was going to bring up um, like a 5K tungsten and another and a 4K HMI and, and a couple of rags. And at the last second, I'm walking with my gaffer, Shane, and I go, grab a, grab a 2K for now. Just grab one and a, and a couple of and grab like 100 foot of stingers and a stand. And he kind of looks at me and, I, and I'm like, in, a, in the four by bead board with a silver side. I said, let's bring that up first, just you and I and the best boy. He's like, okay. And he kind of looks at me funny, like, what? And just something was telling me because I had I'd never seen this roof before. We didn't scout it. We weren't allowed to go on top of it. But I just I've shot on roofs for spec projects for other projects in, in LA and in other cities too. And obviously, and that's that's the shot. <clears throat> and my thought was, well, I don't know exactly where the buildings are gonna be. I know the sun is setting west. I want to try to use the sun as my key light to light her because it's going to look the prettiest. But what happens if it goes behind a building? What am I going to do? She's just going to be in ambient at that point. She won't be in shadow, but it's just going to be, you know, not that great. So my thought was, if I'm desperate, I'll just take that 2K. I'll put it right out of frame and just blast her with it. Because I knew the shot was Joseph wanted it to be. He didn't want to see. He wanted it to be like just standing on the ledge of the of the building. But we brought steel deck up for her to safely stand on because we didn't want her to stand on the ledge. Obviously, she should go fall to her death. Um, so we brought up the four by eight steel deck and some risers to get it up high enough. And um, within two minutes of being up there, light goes away. Like the sun is now gone down behind a building. Hey, Curtis. What's up, buddy? And um, so I'm like, oh, boy. Get that light up. You know, and, and Joseph's looking at me. Everybody's like, what's the, you know, and, I'm, and it's turned Joseph's it. We'll be good. Don't worry. And then thank God we brought up a 2K. And the reason why I stress the 2K is it's I, I needed something that was going to plug into house power. You know, it's, it's going to pull about 18 amps, you know, maybe a little less. <laughs> Um, actually maybe a little more, I might pull 19 and I want to make sure I can just plug it into the wall somewhere. And I figure, well, we're probably gonna have wall power out there, or at least if I got a hundred feet, I'd probably get inside. Well, sure enough, there was power on the roof. We plugged in, fired up the lamp and we hit her with it. And like the second she's up there and we turn the light on, that's what happens. 
and Joseph just loses it. It's just like, oh my god, this looks amazing. Like he was so happy, and I was just like. Like, man, you know, and then I had the guys like give her a little fill, like she did just a little bit. So we caught some of that, just like, you know, kiss a little bit back into her left cheek. <clears throat> but all I could think of was like, as then within five minutes, hey, Dave, they're not letting us bring up the generator. The guy won't let us turn the generator on the hallway, even though he said we were allowed to. He decided, no, I'm not going to let you guys turn the generator on. And no, the generator can't go on the roof. So if I hadn't brought something up with how that could handle house power, yeah, you know what lost I mean. Like it. It's, it lost it. It would just it would have had an ugly shot. You, know, you would have just had a shot that just well, what yeah, is this? bland with no pop. Right. So it's sometimes the simplest things that can do so much. You know. So I think we had. I, I don't. I think we had a, do, a little slider. Yeah, we had a we had a little like a silent cat or eight ball slider that we put on a set of standards and you know the camera we're just you know doing little slider moves around her and stuff and you know we're we got the full set of lenses up there with us so we're i think we were on like a 50 mil for that final shot so you can feel the the parallaxing feel of you know going around her and we shot it in slow motion and and uh you know shot it like you know 72 frames or something so it was cool Okay, let's uh, let's start to wind this one down a little bit here. Do you have any you have any, any of those BTS that you sent, or any of the the stills from the coals, or anything you want me to bring up and talk last, and then we'll just kind of close it out. And um, we would we would go on for three hours, and know, minutes, which is awesome, by the it's way. Cool. Yeah. I love it. What you, I just don't uh, want anything to die. Yeah, of <laughs> the stuff that I've sent. What, what do you what do you want to see? What do you want to talk about? Let's, uh, let's let's just walk through them, and then you can just uh, I'll just. I'll pop them up, and then okay. you can just say, "Yep, no, yep, no." Okay, well, I mean, sure. that's cool. I've already pulled some of these, so that one. Okay, that. Oh, that's just a frame from BB's video. Okay, and there's the. That's on the ground level that we did. Okay. Before we got a to different the one. Yeah, just one okay, shot. This is that's from Coles. That's just close-ups of the of the shoes. That's the wide shot. That's a drone shot. That's BB's drone, drone, drone shot. That's Matt. That's actually a Mavic. Which is funny okay. because that's that's me flying the drone. This might be this might be a good one. So you can do a drone shot. I can do drone shots. Yeah, <laughs> that's me flying the drone. That's um, that's BTS from the Fiat spot with the Sting and Shaggy. That's the tube where the girl has to like fall through back into her bed. We had to do this like whole suspension of this tube. We had to uplight it, all this crazy stuff, and make it feel like daytime. I, it's being pounded with light. It's just absolutely pounded with light, and that's um. That's a close-up from I did this Pearl commercial in Castellarizo, Greece, which is like an island off the coast of Turkey, and um, it was about a um, go back to Coles, and uh, we just had like different what the lighting and Coles. Sure, we can go back to Coles. Um, All right. Go to Coles, sure. But I'll, let me finish this room. I'll finish talking about that. That uh, shot. Finish that one. Okay. Right. But it's just <laughs> this is all natural light with bounce cards it's a mirror board catching sunlight um you can almost see the bounce card in the camera in her eyeball they didn't really do any of the effects on it to clean it up um but it's just uh a mirror board that's catching the sun and giving her that edge across her face and then bounce cards and then it's that's a cook anamorphic on a sony venice with a plus two diopter at 100 mil Very super nice. tight We've yeah. got a lot from Coles here, so let's go through. Yeah, I got a lot, uh, bunch of stuff there. There's Coles, so there's there's that one. Do you want to talk about that one, or you, there's some? Start with the, yeah. We'll start with the wide shot. So this is yep. in. Um, so Coles was using a a piece of Sierra, one of Sierra's songs, and we did like a straight up thirty second. There was no music video. There was no added anything, and um, we get it, Tim. You'd like to know more about it. We get it. <laughs> um, so we were shooting, this is in the, the basement of the Department of Water and Power in, El, in uh, downtown Los Angeles. And the desks and everything on the desks are all art department. The little bench those women are sitting on both sides is art department. It, uh, it's very Mad Men feeling. Yeah, that's exactly what we were trying to go for. Um, and it's a lot of practical lighting that's also playing into a space. So... You can see the the staircase there, this like roundabout staircase. On the top of that staircase is a giant wall of windows. And um, that wall of windows runs the whole 
length of the building. So outside of those windows, we, we decided because we were going to be here all day and into the night, you know, because of the load in and load out was very tedious because of how getting in the building. So we decided to black out um, the windows and put lights inside the windows to keep the light you know, consistent. And this was the first time I'd ever used the Colt LED lights. So I mentioned using those cold LEDs earlier as space lights in um, in the uh, the Pepsi job. You can also use them just as a big light. It's just like they're four individual like big like Fresnels with LEDs behind them. And so we put up, I believe it was four of them in different spots, and we put chrome orange in front of them to just warm them up. I think we even made them daylight to kind of keep that saturation level you know, where we wanted it to be. And so that gives us, you can kind of see it in the back wooden area of where the, the spiral staircase kind of section is. Um, you know, that's that's that light hitting it. The, um, the overhead light, the white light in the, those grates are practicals. Like that's what already existed in that space. Interesting. And I added to it. I added a stair uh, tubes to it because there were some big sections that were burnt out. And so we just... <laughs> We put bulbs in and taped them in and or like zip tied them in there. So I actually shot all of this at like, I, I have to see if I can find it somewhere, but I shot it at like minus 30 on the plus minus green. And then I adapted that with all my lights. Like we ran around with, a, with our color meters, both Shane and I, and we would, our key light, we'd add in the green or we'd add in the green to match all the lights or to, to offset it so that it didn't affect skin tone, you know, overall, because if I didn't do that, everything just looked green. It just had this wash of green all over the place. But I couldn't not embrace what was already there. You know, it was just it was so much stuff. Um, there's little, you know, little lamps and all the desks that you can kind of see in this shot, and they have they have practical bulbs in them that have chrome orange little gel just cut and slid into them. You know, we we um, we didn't grab. We were gonna grab some Phillips Hue bulbs, but it honestly just became the kind of thing of like, it would be faster just to shove some gel in there. So we just did it that way. Um, and then, you know, for this shot, that's all it really is as far as what's hitting her. There's in the background behind her, and there is a room that we went ahead and rolled. I think it was, I think it's a frame of of a two of like a half soft frost, and then I put two sky panels in there and just bloomed it and just tried to bloom it as much as I could um, just to make like a, it's, otherwise it's just a dark kind of gray room in the background. Um, right, let's, then, let's walk yeah. through these. If we can, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this one was that one. Uh, that one. We talked about that one. We talked about that one. That was yeah, just yeah. a big lighted setup. Yeah. And this, so this is more, more coals, more coals, kind of the same. Um, there is a, there's probably a key light on her. I was using a sky panel through a, an octobank, the big soft box on a, on a stand. And that was just kind I of like a key those. light, you know, kind of, I used it kind of like if you were to use a, um, uh, like uh, a breezy light, but you couldn't afford a breezy. So just trying to create a, a, a circular shape, soft with a diffusion to it. I, you know, I didn't want the hard light of a breezy. Like if I had used a breezy, I would have diffused it. But I didn't need the quality of what because you would normally just use a breezy without diffusion because the idea is to use the bare bulb and a poly, polybaric and a parabolic uh, fixture so that you get the hard light. So, All right. yeah. uh, what's this one? That's from the BB Rexa video. So this okay. is again just kind of going into that space of um, you know having freedom to play and it's just it's practical it's practical lamps in the neon. The two practical lamps just have some red cloth or oh, yeah. them. I asked our production designer Pele if she could just throw some stuff on top of she's like, yeah, I got stuff. And then it's a, a gem ball. We were shooting downtown in an old theater and we just used the, the like this area of the theater to shoot this like bedroom scene. And it's just a gem ball, a tungsten gem ball just like sucked into the ceiling as much as possible. And then I had um, some uh, SL2s, the Roscoe SL2s just on standby. And then, like, I wrapped a little bit more light around her face if I needed it, you know, for certain shots. So that's all it really is. All natural light, 100, 100 mil macro. This, again, back to that pearl job. It was just, like, a little moment. And it's just some bounce cards and stuff. Same with this one. But this was all about um, taking the mirror and hitting the lens with it. 
and just hitting the, you know, the mirror. We're, we're upstairs on the second floor of a, of like one of their hotels and we're shooting, um, you know, on the bed and she's just got the pearls laid out and all this kind of stuff. And then we're catching the light from, you know, again, it's the, using the backlight. So you've got the natural rim around her cheek and then just letting the mirror board kiss the lens, you know? So, Very nice. Uh, yeah. so okay. There's your master wide with. Yeah, the spot. Yeah. Yep. They all just kind of uh, go back sitting down. <clears throat> yeah. And the only thing that really changes here is just bringing that key light around to really focus on Sierra, you know, and just giving her kind of favoring her with that, that big Octabank sky panel on the right side of camera. And the rest of the women are all just naturally lit. I probably threw up a couple bounce cards just to kind of skip a little bit into them if I needed it, but there's so much light going over top of camera and behind me just because of the natural, we let it all play. It all had to be on, you know, it's not, you know, there's a plenty of light hitting them naturally. So. Fun, fun fact, uh, <laughs> that post I had made on Facebook where you post 10 jobs, one of them is a lie. Mm -hmm. One, when I was a fax operator, that was the physical desk that I had. It was really? A, it was my, par case. my parents had desks like this, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this is, again, back in the BB Rexa video. We had to shoot, I guess, I think it's a Maserati is the car. I have BTS of the... Um, I think there's some BTS at the cold spot. I think you know what I should do. I should do a article about that cold spot. In yeah, you should. In the Hurlbut Academy, I'll do that. Um, right. But, but back to that um, that BB shot is uh, it's just that's all sky panels. That's all sky panels. It's it's one sky panel dialed purple, just finding the right angle on the right, the kind of the left side of camera in an octobank, and then the right side is another sky panel dial blue and it's just through some and diffusion. That's, and, that's the beauty yeah. of a sky panel being able to wrap colors yeah. around people. It's yeah. wild. And then some bounce cards too in there. Right. This looks like a BTS from let me guess. That's a that's an Alexa. It's an Alexa Mini there. With a master anamorphic. Yep, that's the uh, that's a BTS shot of um the camera in the Sting and Shaggy video. Gotcha. So, okay. More yeah. BB. More BB. Yeah it was just a wider shot we're pulling back. This one I love this shot. This was this was really good. This is at six o'clock in the morning in the island uh, off the coast of Greece. And it's the very first shot of the piece, and so we did most of the sh of the shoot was on Steadicam, and so we had scouted. We were we were in this place. It was a four day shoot. We were there for ten days. It was like being on vacation the whole time. <laughs> I also didn't get paid for the shoot. Oh no! I also ad'd that shoot. I also directed. I also ad'd it and shot it. Um, wow. That one, but that one was just right place, right time. That was just picking the, knowing where to be and just pointing the camera at the back. Is this VFX on this? No, that is uh, the well. The fire is the fire is VFX, okay, okay. but we are shooting into a puddle that was just naturally there. Oh no! Okay, we just, we just saw it. Like it was my focus <laughs> puller saw it. My Jake uh, Rosenblatt, he was the B camera focus puller, and he just turned to me and he's like, "Look at that!" And I was like. JK, nice. look at this. And he was like, oh, that's cool. Let's do that. It was just like kind of one of those happy accidents. Well, that's a perfect example of, of inspiration on site. Somebody yeah. got it. And that's true. Yeah. Th there's Coles. Mm -hmm. So this was, we took a, um, a three axis Lambda head and we just, we rotated the world. So the idea was like, she like leans against the world. It's just kind of to give it some movement. And we just we gotcha. rotated the camera on the roll axis. Right. So. Okay. And this is the pearl. Mm -hmm. This is the pearl spot. There's that's that Island. All that place is all just like, that's naturally there. It's picking the right time of day. Sweet. That's in Miami, you know, just a part of the, um, the pixel spot. This, this is, is Coles. it's Coles again. We're inside the interior of an elevator. Cause it starts out when she walks out of an elevator. And um, it's one of those big octodomes. It's an octodome outside of the elevator, and then it's a couple of stair tubes above her, just giving a little yeah. a little orange feel in the in the elevator. Octodomes it. just is such yeah. a beauty light. It really yeah. is. I know. I, I I believe I even added X. Like I even got closer with another four by frame of of diffusion just to soften her out some more. Yeah. And then now this, this is, is yeah. It, it's very Mad Men. I love it. <laughs> Super Madman, a little, a little less contrast, maybe a little, little brighter. Yeah, you have, you have, a, yeah. yeah, you have the muted colors. Yeah, that's what they wanted. That's what they they wanted yeah. to be brighter. And you know, this is this is uh, example, good example of the eight by eight light gear over lighting a car. You know, this is a part of the Sting and Shaggy video. And then I've got some four by eight sheets of beadboard with the stereotubes 
just bouncing into the the four by eight sheets. I actually I kind of learned that from watching my my buddy Mike Svitak, uh, another DP friend of mine, shoot and operating on some of his car commercials and being like, oh, that's a good idea, you know. So more of that beautiful yeah. morning light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. There's I use a little bounce card there, but that's it's all. Of it's uh, every kid when the COVID uh, <laughs> told them they didn't have to go back to school. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and this is essentially it's all just. I, I'm pretty sure we wrapped a little hard light. I know I was using the digital Sputniks to kind of edge, see the the orange light on the staircase there, and just catching a little bit of that on them too. Like I'm using a. That's the cool thing about that fixture too is I can take. There's six lights. I can pan three of them one way and three of them another way, and I can change the color. It's like using a nine light. You use an old tungsten nine light, same idea, but doing it with LED. This is so one section of the the video was she was supposed to be seducing a priest for whatever reason. <laughs> just because. So she's in a confessional. And right. so she's lit with that is the confessional like slats, like where if you're in a Catholic confessional. There is a bare bulb, just a yellow bare bulb on that side. And then um, I've got another red just bare bulb on the other side. And then I've got in the top of the um, the top rear of the confessional some LED ribbon, just daylight. So there are, you know, I've got three colors there. And then just a little bounce card underneath, just catching some of those just to fill in where I need it. But that was it. Very simple. Very so. nice. More. More of yeah, that one. just more of that one. There's um, sky panels. Sky panels. It's about the same. Yeah, that's really changing yeah. that one. Confessional. Just, there you this is a wider shot of it. Um, actually, it might not have been a bare bulb on that side. I think actually it was. A, I think it was a sky panel, and I dimmed it down. So I forget. Oh, it almost it makes up for us hanging out in LA. Miss you, Curtis. Wish, you, uh, wish, our, wish we could all be hanging out right now. We're, we're we, close we really that. would we're be right now. <laughs> the pearl so, shot. This is a pearl shot. This is a steady cam in a boat. <laughs> oh, in a, in a boat. Why not? Yeah. It was just—it was just like we kind of floated along with her. So and then just more dancing, you know, the same. Yep. Uh, that's just a closer version of that tunnel. That's from I the Sting you. and Shaggy video. Yeah. Okay. More um, of the yeah. pearl shot. Mm -hmm. And then BB. more of BB. This is a, a lot of this was just that was tungsten stuff with some Asteras too. And then um, this is tracking with her dancing. On uh, we used the Ronin. And um, oh, I miss you too, buddy. And using the Ronin and the uh, the, the Venice is inside of it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, then we're we back. Saw that. That. Okay, that's it. Yeah. And there's the one that doesn't work. That one hey, who's work. that guy? <laughs> His haircut <laughs> looks better though. It what? does. If you're ever trying to figure out a way to, to rig the original concept of the, the original original concept of the the, Col the Google Pixel thing was the camera needed to be mounted to the head. So imagine if I'm rolling forward doing this, the camera stays locked. That's as close as I could get before VFX, VFX would have to take over. But VFX needed a month to do what I proposed there. They didn't have the time. They had a week. So we did it the body mount instead. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So let's wrap this one up. And before we get to where everybody can find you, because you, sure. you're going to get to definitely – pass all your information along. Is there anything you want to close with of, of, of anything you didn't get to talk about or say? Or? Um, no, we can really. definitely do this again. Yeah, and we'll label good. our slides. I think, yeah, we can label our slides. We come, I think it, uh, it'd be cool if people want to know more. If, if you look, if I say, if you want to know more, we, uh, take a look at my website and my Instagram and make some questions together. Send them to Scott. We could, we could talk about more specifics. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What is your Instagram? It's uh Everything is at David C W E L D O N J R. Like it's David C Weldon Jr. dot com. The Instagram, Twitter, all of it. It's all the same. So, and if you go to my website, you can find links to the other pages too. It's there at the bottom. And, and what's your website? Uh, David C Weldon Jr. dot com. So. David C Weldon Jr. dot com. Yeah. yeah. If I can do that, and then. Pop that one on there. There you Ooh, go. Everybody yeah. find him there. Yeah, graphics and everything. Cool. Yeah, just doing them on the fly like everything else. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally learning this in the last, I mean, 24 hours. That's is, cool. Is everything I'm learning on this. I definitely got to get my uh, branding right on it. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah it definitely makes a difference. Um, so, anything else you want to say? I mean. I, I think I can think of. I wish I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the heck out of you, dude. I mean, just in every way, not just coming on here, but just 
all through uh, my sure, career yeah. and, and and learning from you and just your your willingness to share and your like, like I said at the beginning, just your attitude. I just I just I love you, dude. You're just amazing. Thanks, I love you too, big guy. Well, I think it's I I've been fortunate enough to where a lot of people have shared <laughs> shared things with me and. <laughs> It's always cool. Like I always appreciate it if somebody asks if they want to know what I've done, and like I have no problem sharing things. It's, you know, I know everybody gets a little weird about it sometimes because it's, you know, everybody has their own little secrets, and and you don't, um, you know, you don't want to, especially when you're starting out, is you're always fearful of like, well, I don't want to end up like losing an opportunity because I gave something away. Right. Like, I don't know, especially with what's going on right now. I'm kind of like. We could all be yeah, dead. Exactly. We would all be dead tomorrow, so what does it matter? Tim wanted me to show that real quick so Curtis can go, hey, wait, what? What? Because <laughs> <laughs> Curtis gonna, loves his black magic too. I'm not gonna tell you, Curtis. You gotta watch, you gotta go back. And you watch. gotta go back and watch the whole stream. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you once again, David Weldon, yeah. for your wealth of knowledge. And we will do this again soon. And totally. I'll be more organized. And, uh, I I really can't thank you enough. And anybody, everybody, please follow him. Uh, I mean, he's he's David Weldon. I mean, <laughs> nothing more like, I can say. I'm just I mean, another Curtis, dude like say it. Curtis says it best. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I just realized too that those graphics have everybody's like. If they came, yeah. they commented from Facebook. It's pulling their images. That's exactly, cool. it's it's wow. awesome. It's really cool. It's really nice. But uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section down below. Uh, I'll pass them along to David if uh, uh, if and we'll get an answer for you on on YouTube or Facebook. I think Facebook will do that. Uh, and as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Thanks, buddy. You got it. And uh...